some adventures, let's say, at some of the personnel key spots, especially quarterback position. Last week, excellent performances in defeat. Now the question will be, is there a false positive to take from a defeat? You lose to Florida, you lose to Alabama. Have you made enough improvement in what it should be a measuring stick game for the second half of the season for both of these programs? And I think the big question, Stinch, we all have is what will Jeremy Pruitt do at quarterback today? Brian Maurer sustained a concussion two weeks ago here against Mississippi State. Then last week, he was injured on the field and went through concussion protocol, taking that shove from true freshman Shane Lee of Alabama. Jarrett Garantano came into the game, improvised. Everybody in Knoxville knows what happened next. Then it was JT Shrout who cleaned things up at the end. Shrout will be the first quarterback on the field for UT, but we also may see some Juwan Jennings. And it's that revolving door at quarterback that I think has really compromised Tennessee offensively. An offensive line that's starting to round into form, really starting to assert itself, a ground game that seemingly found its legs versus the Alabama defense. It's what are you going to do at quarterback? If Shrout's the first quarterback out there, if Jawan Jennings is the first Wildcat quarterback out there, and how much of Jared Garantano are we gonna see here today? We know we're going to see Ryan Helensky, the true freshman quarterback for the Gamecocks, who's been the unquestioned leader now for South Carolina. Muschamp's team beat Georgia, lost to Florida. Both were competitive. What was the difference? Well, the takeaway is obviously a glaring statistic, but the other piece of it is this. Defensively for South Carolina, a much improved unit, but they allowed the explosive plays to the Gators, and they kept those dampened versus the Georgia Bulldogs. Only one play that would be considered an explosive versus Georgia. They allowed six versus the Gators. That was the difference in the ball game last week. UT won the toss and deferred South Carolina to receive the kick as Shai Smith waits on the kick from Paxton Brooks. And the Gamecocks will start at the 25-yard line. Ryan Holinsky has been the starter every week since the second week of the season from Orange, California. Went to Orange Lutheran High School. Was named the 2018 National Player of the Year. His brothers Kelly who played at Columbia and Weber State, and Tyler, who was at Wazoo, also played quarterback in college very quickly. A man that turned 19 on Thursday has become the leader of the Gamecocks. They're forced into service, and they are expecting much improved play. They need it in their downfield passing game. The throw on the first play, middle of the field is open, and streaking past midfield is Shai Smith. He beats everybody. 75 yards. That was the junior's 100th career catch, and boy, was it a big one. Well, a lot is talked about Brian Edwards, but Shai Smith has certainly emerged as a primary target. And you can see why with that run after the catch. What a way to open up this game offensively for a quarterback that needs to build his confidence. You look at the top of the screen, and here's Shai Smith. He has been a menace out of the slot most of the season. You see confusion, safety late coming over. The slot defender, a little bit confused in coverage. And Shai Smith is hit with a strike from Ryan Holinsky. Hit him in stride. You see some of these other offenses, you're allowed your receiver to run through a catch and then split the safeties and take it to the checkerboard. Holinsky and the Gamecocks fired up as the balls have allowed a touchdown on the opposition's opening drive in four of the last five games. I know Gamecocks fans remember Shai's catch in the Outback Bowl, the 53-yarder to help beat Michigan. That one for 75. Well, Tommy will kick it deep. Runs on the field first 
for the Tennessee Volunteers. Whoever it is already has pressure. You knew it coming into this game, but this game could not have started worse for Tennessee offensively, knowing the question marks that they have at quarterback. And it does look like Jawan Jennings will take the first snap as a Wildcat quarterback. Jennings has two touchdown passes in his career, two for four career passing. He was a dual threat quarterback recruit coming out of high school. On the option, he keeps it, following blocks in front from Jordan, and that is right at the markers. It's a first down. We saw a couple of Wildcat looks last week versus Alabama. Both of them were these type runs. Sweep outside, round to the left of the offensive formation. But Tennessee had other success as well as we'll see JT Shrout now in the game. Shrout, the red shirt freshman from Santa Clarita, California, is three for 10 passing on the season. And some more trickeration. Will Jennings load up now? He wants to and throws the deep ball into double coverage. Caught by Callaway. A flag comes in after the play. We checked the flag, but how did that ball ever find its way to Callaway? That's the center, Brandon Kennedy. Well, he ended up just kind of leaking down late. Brandon Kennedy, and obviously they're trying to run it, play action on a reverse look. Jawan Jennings gets two touches, but watch him kind of leak downfield. There he is. See Brandon Kennedy right there on your screen, well downfield. Easy call for the officials to make by the time Jennings threw it. Made it a 33-yard play to the ground. It's Ty Chandler. And Ty goes to the 36-yard line. T. Shrout was recruited by both schools as he runs off the field. As Jim Chaney, the offensive coordinator, and Jeremy Pruitt throw the kitchen sink at Will Muschamp. Well, you can tell, obviously, Jawan Jennings, the most targeted receiver can't get the ball in his hands enough twice now already either as a runner or as a reverse passer in this game second and ten fake jet sweep to gray jennings straight ahead might have gotten a yard as sherrod green came in to make the tackle javon kinlaw one of the best defensive tackles in college football was there too so now an obvious passing down and this is the unknown talking to the coaches about J.T. Shrout. They liked him in practice. Jim Chaney said, but it doesn't matter. We don't know anything about this kid really in game, other than in mop-up duty last week when he came in for Jared Garantana. One-on-one -on -one for Callaway, overshoots him. No flags, fourth down. South Carolina is not a big pressure team, but that time they did blitz. Allow the new guy at quarterback, let him see it. Try to stand down the pressure through it downfield. South Carolina is very physical in the secondary. You see Javon Kinlaw right in Shrout's face as he's trying to get that ball out. You see Israel McQuamu, he's got a handful of jersey. Of course, what Jeremy Pruitt is lobbying the officials on the sideline. Joe Doyle. Gets it off with a short punt. Takes a Tennessee bounce out of bounds inside the 20 yard line. 44 yard punt for the balls. Gamecocks on top. We think you would really shine in the AFLAC program. AFLAC? Coach Saban, we have health insurance. Did health insurance pay for everything? No. We still have bills. AFLAC gives you money directly to help with those. AFLAC. And your deductibles, knee brace, whatever you choose. AFLAC sounds like a winner. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. We try.
Get help with expenses health insurance doesn't cover. Affleck is an official sponsor of the SEC. I found a way to relieve my constipation that's both gentle and fast. New Dulcolax liquid works naturally with the water in my body to provide gentle relief in as little as 30 minutes. New stimulant-free Dulcolax liquid puts you comfortably in control. At Zaxby's, chicken and delicious go hand in hand. As in hand-breaded, hand-seasoned, and handmade to order. There's only one place you can get chicken like that. Zaxby's. There's some people you meet that have a real spark, and Dorothy Kemp is one of those people who has a real spark. The Boys and Girls Club allow for kids in the community to see others invested in them. In order to make sure we're building strong communities and strong kids, the community members need to be present. Boys and Girls Club provides them a place so they can really have a childhood. Being able to volunteer and work with kids and have that impact on their future is awesome. To hear the rest of Dorothy's story, visit belk.com slash project hometown. On a spooky fansville by Dr. Pepper. Did you hear that? Someone's in the house. <laughs> I can. I think you just ran a skinny post. Go state. Oh, it's a state fan. Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. This <laughs> guy. It's Velveeta versus the other guys. Clearly, nothing melts like Velveeta. Uh, you could see in that previous play. Jeremy Pruitt unhappy, wasn't happy last week. You see why? Israel McQuamu, he's got a handful of jersey. And you know, the argument is that that ball was uncatchable from JT Stroud. Well, it's uncatchable because the defensive back is holding Marquez Callaway virtually throughout the entirety of his route. Ended up spinning Callaway completely around towards the end of it. Right, his whole argument is he had a handful of jersey. Doesn't matter if the ball went on the bench. If you're being held like that, both of these teams are tired of arguing for themselves the last couple of weeks as Tavian Feaster, the Clemson transfer, gets it up to the 24-yard line. Now let's see who is kind of a big deal bought, brought to you by Old Trapper. See that right after the play. Quick throw, it's Shai Smith, 75 yards the first time. He gets one this time kind of a big deal brought to you by old trapper brian edwards can become the career leader in receptions for south carolina today jawan jennings is having an all-world senior season third and four for carolina a down with south carolina has struggled mightily this season and struggling again as no flag comes in, Shai Smith, the intended target, Nigel Warrior right there with him. 13th in the conference is South Carolina. 84% conversions on their third down attempts coming into this game. And the question marks for Holinsky has been his accuracy, incredibly accurate in his opening two starts, Charleston Southern, Alabama. Has been a little bit off target. He's been on target all year. Joseph Charlton, the second best in the country. But Callaway calls for a fair catch at the 34. It's a 41 yard punt. Say good afternoon to Alyssa Lang. Guys, looking at this matchup, these two teams have played each other pretty close over the last couple of years. But one matchup in particular I'm going to keep my eye on is Tennessee's offensive line against South Carolina's defensive line. Head coach Jeremy Pruitt said last week against Alabama it was his O-line who really was the one setting the tone of that game. They'll have their hands full this week with Javon Kinlaw, who's been getting in the face of quarterbacks all season, helping that secondary get a couple more picks over the last couple of weeks. It's going to be a battle in the trenches today. Day, guys. Yes, it will, Alyssa. And you talk to coaches around this conference. They think Javon Kinlaw is one of the best defensive tackles in the game. As the handoff goes to Chandler right at the middle of that South Carolina front. 
for a couple. What makes Kinlaw so special? Well, he's such a good long lever player. So he's got length at 6'6", but it's his ability to knock the offensive line back. And when you're playing a zone blocking team like Tennessee, the difficulty is he can force those two linemen that are trying to work together to work on, have to work on different levels. It's hard to combination block a defensive lineman that's getting penetration at the point of attack. Nobody in the backfield for Trout. Second and eight, quick throw, and it is caught. That's just a minimal gain for Tyler Bird. This is fourth catch of the season. Jamie Robinson with the quick tackle. Ken Law, his pressure of the quarterback has led to three of the last four interceptions for the Gamecocks. He dropped those 45 pounds in the last couple of years by no longer eating Chinese food and pizza. That's willpower. We wouldn't give up the Bojangles, he told us, though. That's Chicken specific. Supreme Boxes, that's right. Be specific. Third and three with Tim Jordan on the field. Next to J.T. Shroud. Shroud, first down throw to Jennings in the South Carolina territory. Well, that time, Jawan Jennings matched up across from Israel McQuamu. They were in man coverage. Not something South Carolina spends a lot of time in, but they ran a perfect play for that. The mesh route. Two shallow crosses right there in front. And it's just enough to rub off McQuamu and allow Jennings room to get, make that reception for Shroud. Move off the all-time receiving ladder today. Jennings will as a 12-yard reception. A snap from the South Carolina 46 to freshman Eric Gray around the edge for a few as Ernest Jones pushes him out of bounds. Second down, Tennessee has used Eric Gray. They've used Ty Chandler. And last week, Tim Jordan had the best game of his career against Alabama. Jordan really did pace the rushing tack a week ago. You look at his production with the 17 carries, nearly 100 yards with 94 yards of production. But Tennessee's done a good job from a personnel standpoint, keeping South Carolina on their toes. Second and six, Chandler. Look at that big hole. Inside the 35, first down balls. Well, that time, Tennessee captures the edge right now. And Daniel Fennell ends up sinking inside. So they end up capturing the edge. See it right now where Fennell's inside. They over-pursue JT Ivey too far outside. And you end up getting gapped right there in the C-gap, outside of the tackle of tight end. Chandler again, inside the 30. Will Muschamp says Chandler and Jordan are violent downhill runners. They're physical guys. You know, Chandler's got a little bit more wiggle to him than Tim Jordan, and, and maybe the capability of running away, pursuing tacklers. Jordan, a bit more of a bruiser. Tough running back, kind of hid behind his pads last week versus Alabama. But right now, the Tennessee offensive front starting to assert itself. Chandler out, Jordan in with the football, moving laterally and dragged down by R.J. Roderick. Well, a couple weeks ago, Will Muschamp, Traveris Robinson, defensive coordinator of South Carolina, both defensive backs, former defensive backs in this league, as you see true freshman Darnell Wright, starting right tackle hobble off. Marcus Tatum will come in to spell him. And that was after the first negative play for Tennessee. That's something offensively that they've done a much better job of this year was eliminating those negative yardage plays and tackles for loss. 11 plays for Tennessee, eight runs. Figured this would be a pass here on third and six. Shroud facing all kinds of pressure, has to get rid of it. And he is inside the tackle box there as DJ Wanham was all over him. TJ Brunson back there too. It's fourth and six. It was Wanham and Brunson, as you mentioned, and you see a little bit of confusion at left tackle, Wanye Morris just allowing Brunson a free run on the inside. Something that you always have to be cognizant of. You have to protect inside out. That's the shortest route to the quarterback. Ended up affecting that play. Brent Zamaglia from 46 yards. And this is good. And he now has the best 
field goal percentage in UT history at 78%. The junior from Nashville, Tennessee, puts the balls on the board and is fired up. Gear up for fall at Academy Sports and Outdoors. You don't think it'll happen to you. And you surely don't think it'll happen twice. I've lost two homes in my lifetime. First, it was a fire. My agent was right there and helped me rebuild. Then the tornado hit and destroyed everything again. Both times, my independent agent and auto owners took care of me like someone takes care of family. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. Old Trapper Beefs. Fake protein. Guys, can we take a quick protein break? Protein City. I got my beans, my bars, my goose, my glumps, my fizz. I don't know what that one is, but you want in? I'm good, man. I think goop was a bad choice. Old Trap, what's your beef? Real steel. Find yours. Right now, double your run times. Buy any AK battery set and get the second battery half off. Battery power. Made by steel. Find yours at steeldealers.com. Gear up for fall at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Guys, on the sideline moments ago, head coach Jeremy Pruitt coming over to his young quarterback, JT Shroud, unhappy with the way he looked on that last offensive drive at the same time. Jerry Garantano warming up with quarterback Brian Maurer on the sidelines. We know we'll see Garantano at some point. And Coach Pruitt told us earlier in the week that he had a feeling it would be early. We'll see who comes out next for Tennessee. Well, you can see they haven't given Shroud a ton of opportunities. But you have to think that Garantano, who outside of it was a vexing decision on the goal line. Played relatively well in relief of Brian Maurer last week versus Alabama. The weight on the balls on offense. While the Gamecocks have the football, there's their play distribution this year. Third downs has been a bugaboo. That's the difficulty. And when we start talking about accuracy at quarterback, it's where it shows up. And Ryan Alinsky you know, got banged up. Left the game versus Georgia. He was dealing with some tendonitis earlier in the year versus Missouri. They're saying that he is more healthy, not fully healthy. You see the brace that's on his left leg. All kinds of confusion with that snap. Ball start, offense, number 54, five-yard penalty, first down. Well, South Carolina was trying to run an alternate formation. It's really just the core, center and two guards right there in the middle and you see this so you've got your center and two guards right here your tackles have split out so they're outside and you've got just the three there in the middle more of a traditional look here on a first and 15 as Helinski has Mon Denson in the backfield big tailback gets a yard that's it Nigel Warrior <laughs> Looks like Mon Denson was injured. Obviously, he's getting more touches because of an injury to Rico Dowdle. It looks like he hurt his right shoulder. Mon had all several hamstring issues last season. He's carried the football for over 200 yards. And with Dowdle and Denson both out, they'll rely on Tavian Feaster. Timeout.
measure success in points, in wins, or trophies. At Shelter Insurance, we measure success in the quality of our products and services, in how we support our communities, in being there when you need us most. We're your shield. We're your shelter. We're in Big Blue Nation. The Wildcats at home. An SEC East showdown. To another level. Bryant wants it off towards the end zone. Running open. It's Albert O for the touchdown. Look at end zone. Made for the modern boss. The tech advance Nissan Murano. This is Nissan Intelligent Mobility. There's been a shift in the hearts of Americans. They want to see unity, and that's what I promised. Nice passion. You are the coldest reptile I've ever seen. And a deadly one. The American people saw Hunter as not only a leader, but as a husband and a father who was loyal. Let me in there! I'm gonna fight the hard fight for all Americans. You two are the perfect couple. Yes, we are, aren't we, darling? Tyler Perry's The Oval, Wednesday at 9. Denson going off the field at a touchdown run on the first drive versus Florida last week. Senior has six career rushing touchdowns. And with Rico Dowdle's knee injury, we'll have to rely on Tavian Feaster. Meanwhile, Tennessee's right tackle, the true freshman Darnell Wright, bothered by a leg injury just one possession ago. And Shai Smith, who caught that 75-yard touchdown, was bothered by his ankle on that last play. The feaster, ball tipped in the air looking for Edwards. It's third down. The ball was behind Brian Edwards. They're allowed, otherwise, if you get that ball out in front, Edwards does perhaps what Shai Smith did. If you're able to lead it out there, lay it out there in front of him, and allow your receiver to run into it. Instead, it was behind him and easily defended. South Carolina is 113th in the country on third down conversions. Incomplete to Edwards right near the sticks with Theo Jackson in coverage. Start out with the empty backfield. Then you motion in a tight end and a back to go max protection and had an opportunity to convert. That ball was low. Brian Edwards, though, had a chance to come up with what would have been a conversion, and instead, they'll rely on Charlton again to regain some field position. Charlton has the best average in school history. 40 yards his first time. As Callaway, on the way from it, it takes a South Carolina bounce all the way down to the 22-yard line. That is a 57-yard punt. Callaway taking responsibility for that, saying, my fault. Meanwhile, number one, it watches number two, Jared Garantano, the junior from Lodi, New Jersey, onto the field, trying to make amends for what went wrong at the goal line last week in Tuscaloosa. Last week, Less than 50%. But there's been so much rotation at quarterback already in this game. Maybe he's just slip into the lineup. Chandler gets the handoff for a couple. It's second down and eight. Tano needs 273 yards passing to pass Keith Schuler today for 10th in school history. He's the lowest interception rate of anyone that's ever worn the orange too with just nine and over 500 attempts 
but Vol fans want to see him utilize the plays that are called by Jim Cheney today. That's been the challenge throughout this season, executing within the offense. Second and eight, first attempt for Garantano, and it's a first down completion. As Josh Palmer made the catch, here's what happened at the goal line last week. They could see Alabama, and they hurried up to the line, and it wasn't a QB sneak that was called. They were calling a 97. G. Lee trying to get Trey Smith to pull and kick out. You had a lead blocker up into the hole. It's a walk. But you ran, hurry up, and you improvise the QB sneak. End up costing you seven and giving your opponent going the other way. Chandler's going to lose yardage. Met in the backfield by T.J. Brunson. Well, T.J. Brunson didn't start the season very well. In fact, he was kind of slow, really. But watch him shoot this gap. He diagnoses. He gets downhill right now. Brandon Kennedy couldn't wheel fast enough. Kind of backdoored it as opposed to playing over top. Had a nice cut block on the backside, but well played by Brunson. Will Muschamp's first ever recruit four years ago. Heart and soul of that defense. Garantano in trouble as to throw it away. Pressure that time by Daniel Fennell. That time Fennell did a great job getting upfield quickly, as did Kobe Smith. You've seen a couple of times in this game, South Carolina able to get pressure when Tennessee's trying to set up a play-action pass. You've got these guys up front, and it's a fine line. As an offensive lineman, you want to sell the run, yes, but you also have to provide that protection. Your quarterback's back is to the line of scrimmage. Twice now, the ball quarterback's incapable of getting their heads around Cleveland. 11, hand off to Chandler. That's a first down run. Catching the Gamecocks by surprise on a 13-yard draw. Well, they got South Carolina in a light box. Only five defenders tackle to tackle. Well, you got five blockers in your offensive linemen. They did a great job. Chandler is clean through that hole, and it was immense. Five-yard average for the junior from Nashville. Led the team in rushing last year and is in the lead this year. Safety valve incomplete to Tim Jordan with a flag down. I think they're going to get a hold. Marcus Tatum in there for Darnell Wright. We talked to this coaching staff. We said, how good is South Carolina up front? We talked to the Tennessee coaches, and they said, we think they're better than what we saw last week at Alabama. Holding offense number 68, 10-yard penalty, first down. At that time, Tennessee, they're trying to load up and throw the football downfield. Instead, Garantano hung on to it a little bit. You see Tatum right here and Sterling. When you hold on to the football a little bit, you see the ride. Tatum's trying to run the arc. Then he realizes, hey, he's still got the football. And that last little bit of tug on Aaron Sterling is what through the flag. This one is Jordan. Brunson, Wanham. An entire front right there to greet him. It'll be second down. What specifically do you see that makes the game Cox potentially better than the Crimson Tide up front? Well, it starts with just the personnel, right? You look at the Crimson Tide, take nothing away from their outside linebackers. But when you look at what Javon Kinlaw can mean to a pass rush, to a defensive front, the fact that he can push that pocket inside out, literally collapsing it inside out, but also win a one-on-one, -on -one, that's what changes it. You got Dennis Waddle outside, Aaron Sterling, you've already seen Fennell as well. They can bend the edges from the outside. Tano on second and 18, finds a receiver streaking. That's Cedric Tillman, and that's a first down to the true, to the red shirt freshman from Las Vegas. How about this strike from Jared Garantano? Stab it in there to Cedric Tillman, wide open. Guamu well off in coverage. He knows where he's going right now. Deliver it. Put it on his front side numbers and let him run through this pass. We saw Shai Smith take it to the house for South Carolina. That time Cedric Tillman able to convert a third and long. 
As you see, it looks like Austin Pope shaking up a bit after that play. Junior from Knoxville, from Christian Academy. Local product on the field, timeout. When it's lights off, it's game on with ProJax. Turn any room in your house into a projecting gaming arcade. That's a blast to play. No TV or sensors needed. Just point ProJax at a blank wall, grab a blaster, and aim for your target. But stay sharp, they move fast. Digital scoring keeps track of your hits. You can play solo, head-to-head, -head, or team up for co-op play. Swap slides to blast different targets. Go duck hunting or defend against UFOs. Projex comes with five built-in games that challenge your speed and accuracy. Plus, you can level up with three different skill levels. Because it's portable and battery-powered, you can play Projex inside or out. You get awesome lighting, crisp, clear projection, and intense sound effects. You can get the brand new Projects 2 Blaster set with three target slides and TV exclusive sticker sheet. All for $49.99 plus $7.99 processing and handling. Batteries not included. Must be 18 years or older to order. It's the projecting portable arcade that's a blast to play. It's Projects. Dari Noka in studio. We've got a touchdown in Baton Rouge. LSU with the ball and cruising 10 plays, 89 yards. Here's how it finishes. Joe Burrow. To Terrace Marshall, welcome back after missing time with an injury. 7-3 LSU early second, TZ. Daria, I know you're licking your wounds over what happened to your alma mater in the Little Apple today. That's the shocker in college football stint. K-State beating Boomer Sooner. Chris Kleinman coming from North Dakota State, bringing his winning ways to Manhattan. Dr. Eric Gray. And Sherrod Green greets him for another loss. Look at the undefeated teams now in college football. They are, the list is down to nine, including the Appalachian State Mountaineers, who are playing the Gamecocks in a couple of weeks. That's right. And obviously Alabama and LSU, after this week, will have an open date to prepare for their matchup. LSU taking on the Tigers right now. See Alabama tangling with the Arkansas Razorbacks this Saturday. Backup quarterback Matt Jones starting in that game. Tim Jordan on second and ten. And how about the Gamecocks meeting the Tennessee defenders time and time again at the line? It's Spinell again. Come in a little bit of a line stunt. The delayed draw, the delay handoff in the Tennessee backfield. Especially when those draw actions, when you get some movement, especially from the defensive lineman. Cause confusion. Now the third tackle for loss by the South Carolina defense. What does Jim Cheney draw up for Jared Garantano on the third and eleven? Finds a time and a perfect pass to Jennings. Great blocking in front and Jennings fighting inside the twenty. Good crowd. Here in Neyland Stadium, cheering on Jared Garantano for delivering a 26-yard pass to Jennings. Back-to-back -back completions from Garantano downfield. Stretching the South Carolina defense. We talk about the big plays that the Gamecocks gave up to Florida a week ago with Jawan Jennings. He is lethal with that football in his hands after the catch. In the red zone, it's now Chandler hitting the hole near the 10. Jennings, when you watch him, it was not like he's incredibly fast, but they got the matchup that they wanted. Matched up with JT eBay, a safety. But then once he makes those catches, and he just kind of snatches the ball out of the air, he turns into a runner. And he is so physical after the catch. Open field tackle by Israel Mukwamu. Not just known for his interceptions. That's right. Uh, you see him, he gets up. So maybe he injured his right hip a little bit. Now he leaves the field. Into the first quarter on the first offensive play, Ryan Holinsky found Shai Smith for a 75 yard touchdown. Balls are on the doorstep trying to take the lead. Fansville by Dr. Pepper. Go State. Go State. 
Snake? His first words. You are my son. Eight states? Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. It's not pretty good or nothing. It's not acceptable or nothing. And it's definitely not close enough or nothing. Mercedes-Benz SUVs were built, designed, and engineered with only one mission in mind. To be the absolute best. In the category, in the industry, in the world. Test drive one of seven Mercedes-Benz SUVs at your authorized dealer today. Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. I'm a tailgater tailgating to get to my tailgate. Now, it might not get me there any faster, but hey, it gets me ready for football. Let's tailgate. There's, th I can't go anywhere. But you're so busy watching me tailgate that you don't see the one in front of you. And your cut rate car insurance, it might not pay for this. So get all state and be better protected from mayhem, like me. <laughs> when your skin is feeling dry and crinkly, time for Gold Bond Healing Lotion. Penetrates 10 surface layers deep with seven moisturizers, three vitamins. Skin is nourished, healed, healthy looking. Gold Bond Healing, ultimate lotion, ultimate skin. What makes a house a home looks different for everyone. Apply on your phone in minutes for a region's home equity line of credit to transform your vision into a reality. Because some things are bigger than banking. So here's the deal. Somewhere along the way, Western boots got too expensive. And the styles? <sighs> Well, Tecovas fixed that. We make handcrafted, high-quality Western boots from the finest materials for a fair price. With free shipping, returns, and exchanges, and service that would make our grandmothers proud. From comfort to quality to price, value is one of our values. Find your pair only at Tecovas.com. Support your favorite college at Fanatics.com, the largest assortment of officially licensed fan gear from more than 500 colleges. Every conference, every team. Shop now and get today's special offer. Fanatics.com, officially licensed everything. Selling on Poshmark is crazy simple. All you have to do is post a picture, of, add a description, add a price, and you're pretty much good to go. Right now I'm selling Air Jordans and Nikes and Adidas, anything really performance related or style related. Download the free Poshmark app now. We start the second quarter. It's third and one for the Vols at the South Carolina nine. Jim Chaney, the offensive coordinator, drew up a great play for Garantano last week. What does he call this time on this third and one to move the chains? On the goal line, and they had a couple of conversions actually in the field with QB sneaks, but in a different formation than the intended play on the goal line play. He calls a sneak for Garantano. And right at the sticks, it looks like it's good enough to move the chains. Tennessee had a ton of success with this last week. It wasn't the call play on the goal line, but in the field, short yardage, they ran QB sneak with effectiveness. That time running behind the big, big Jerome Carbon at right guard. And that Tennessee front guard to guard got plenty of push. 14 play of the drive for Garantano and the Vols, snapping this one from just inside the eight. Wants to throw, one on one, and too high for Jennings with Mukwamu right there. Let's go down to Alyssa. Yeah, guys, you saw Mukwamu a couple of minutes ago hobbling off the field. He got addressed by trainers. They looked at him. He came back out limping still, but was jogging around on the field. And as you can see, he looks okay out there now. I love the idea, Alyssa, of going right after him. Come off the field. You convert the third and short, and then as soon as you can, test it out. Let's see. Let's throw a ball to our best receiver in the end zone. Didn't like the pass. Love the idea. Toss to Jordan. Cuts it back inside, and he's inside the three, where it'll be third and goal. Well, there were some collisions on that run. This is something 
that Tennessee is adding. Now watch Jameer Johnson. Wow. I don't, know, I don't know how that isn't holding, by the way. Jameer Johnson basically tackles Jamie Robinson. And Jamie has to come off the field because his helmet came off. Third and goal. Balls at the one. Jordan is stopped. R.J. Roderick put a hat on him. Fourth down. We're trying the left side that time. We have an injury on the field. Roderick's helmet came off, so he's going to have to come out of the game. And that's Wanye Morris, the true freshman right tackle. Darnell Wright was hurt earlier. This is the true freshman left tackle. Wanye Morris was in there. The right tackle. It's why Jameer Johnson was at left tackle. It's been musical meatheads for Tennessee offensive line. Just different guys rotating in and out of there. Marcus Tatum's already been in there for Darnell Wright. You put Wanya Morris in there at right tackle. And now as he is down, and soon it's going to be the charge of the light brigade for Tennessee up front. See, here's Morris right here. Now he started the game at left tackle. Watch number 64. Gets his hat across pretty good, but it looks like he went down early. I don't know if he injured himself. It looked like at first contact. He went almost to the ground, almost immediately. Visited with our broadcast team yesterday. Just a joy to be around. A guy that's wise beyond his years. He's been forced into action. This is not an easy conference to play as a true freshman. It looks like it's that right arm. If you didn't like him already, uh, our appreciation for him went to a new level when he told us that his favorite restaurant is the Waffle House. That's right. And so was it sausage, scrambled cheese egg, a hash brown bowl or something? That was one of many orders I think he made. You can see the frustration of the young man as he leaves the field. Are you kicking or are you going? You see Tennessee struggling on fourth down. They're the worst in the country. It looks like they're set up. Last time we just talked about it. What they ended up doing was they tried to run a G lead. That means that you would pull your guard towards the edge. It was Trey Smith that would have been the lead blocker. We've already seen Tennessee convert on a QB sneak, but that is a full yard to go. They got an extra offensive lineman to this side of the formation. Make the Jordan wants the throw, nothing home. Garantano, incomplete. Turnover on downs after a 17-play drive. See, Will Muschamp is fired up, and so is Jeremy Pruitt. You see Garantano, you load up, you come into an unbalanced front. You see TJ Brunson in coverage of Damian Woods Anderson. And you can see Jeremy Pruitt over and over again, holding, holding. They've already, he has been all in the officials ear already earlier in the first quarter saying, look man, you got to tell me what's going to be called and what isn't. That's what he's pointing out yet again. Garantano looks up. He had nowhere to go with the football on fourth down. Ends up throwing it out of the back of the end zone. Here's Woods Anderson right here. Tight end for Tennessee. He releases. T.J. Brunson spun him around nearly coming off the line. Turnover on down. 17 plays. No points. This is Fracture. Just upload an image, place your order, and it'll show up at your door, beautifully printed directly on glass. And this isn't just another frame, not just another canvas. This is new. This is a Fracture. Visit FractureMe.com and print one today. We're in Big Blue Nation. The Wildcats at home. In 
ACC East Showdown. To another level. Bryant wants it off towards the end zone, running open. It's Albert O for the touchdown. Look at end zone. It is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland Thomas. You can't beat Bowden. Let's hit it. As a physician, the bulk of what I do is deliver babies. The experience is minimized by the fact that I'm hiding my teeth. Instead of covering with my hand, I will put the mask on. My smile was no longer there. When Richard came in for his consultation, he didn't want to smile. He was embarrassed. At Clear Choice, we want patients to absolutely walk out of here saying, this was the best decision I've ever made. He reassured me very professionally this can be done. Clear Choice is the future. Between the technology of being able to 3D map out my bone structures and then to custom make the implants and put it in knowing that it can stay there for the duration of my life. Why would I want to have dentures? When it was all done, I had my miracle. And that's what he wanted to give back. He wanted to be able to smile. I'm glad I get to smile again. It changed my life. position to make a play that time South Carolina lucky that they gained any yards in fact it was along the line of scrimmage and now a third and long for the Gamecocks off of their own goal line you had an empty red zone possession if you're Tennessee this is a huge opportunity to catch an excellent field position Easter First down near the 15. A pickup of for 12 for the senior from Spartanburg, South Carolina, who went off against the Gators last week. Well, look at what they've got here. Where's your second level defenders right here? No one. They're spread out. You got one back in the backfield, four wide receivers. Peacey does an excellent job of that draw play. An inside carry to Tavian as Daniel Batuli greets him after a gain of maybe two. Consider the fact that there aren't many players in the history of college football that have transferred from one rival to the other. Feaster, who scored 19 touchdowns and ran for over 1,700 yards and won two national championships for Clemson, comes over to the rival Gamecocks, and he's become their featured tailback. You saw that production last week, 25 carries, 175 yards on the ground versus a really good Gator defense. Von Denson back in the game. After getting banged up a couple of drives ago. On a minimal gain, it's third down. So far, Tennessee has done an excellent job of bottling up the Gamecock rushing attack. You see a lot of pulling guards. They'll pull their center at times. And the idea is to get some extra blockers at the point of attack versus Jeremy Pruitt's defense. So far, Henry Toe oh, to, and Daniel Petuli have done an excellent job of bottling up the Gamecock rushers. No draw here. Instead, it's a sack. Collapsing on the quarterback in the backfield. Daryl Taylor. discussed some of the calls that these programs haven't liked in the last week. Taylor got a personal foul against Alabama that extended a drive. He gets the sack here as Charlton punts from his own end zone. It's a beauty and sends Callaway back to his own 36. 
He's got two career punt returns for touchdowns. Make it three. Sixty-five yards. So you get denied the end zone on your red zone possession on fourth down. Then your defense comes out, stones your opponent's offense, forces them to try to get a punt away, try to pick up field position, and one of the best punt return men, if you give him a shot at it, Callaway can hurt you. That was basically the touchdown the balls didn't get on offense on their previous possession. 10-7 Tennessee. You get the sack on third down from Daryl Taylor. And then Joe Charlton outkicks his coverage and Callaway makes him pay. Who do you think of when I say hero? Is it someone in a cape or is it someone you know? In SEC country, being a hero means tutoring a struggling student feeding hungry neighbors in your community, or showing up at a hospital to make a child's day a little brighter. Heroes are all around us, and Belk wants to celebrate them with what we're calling Project Hometown Heroes. We'll show you everyday heroes that are strengthening the communities around the SEC. Now, who do you think of when I say hero? Learn more at belk.com slash project hometown. Star Backyards, Yellowwood brand pressure treated pine. If it doesn't have this yellow tag, you don't want it. You don't think it'll happen to you, and you surely don't think it'll happen twice. I've lost two homes in my lifetime. First, it was a fire. My agent was right there and helped me rebuild. Then the tornado hit and destroyed everything again. Both times, my independent agent and auto owners took care of me like someone takes care of family. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. So here's the deal. Somewhere along the way, Western boots got too expensive. And the styles? <laughs> well, Tecovas fixed that. We make handcrafted, high-quality Western boots from the finest materials for a fair price. With free shipping, returns, and exchanges, and service that would make our grandmothers proud. From comfort to quality to price, value is one of our values. Find your pair only at tecovas.com. SEC Network Football is brought to you by delicious ice-cold Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville, returning every Saturday throughout the football season with the rest of the commercials. Marquez Callaway with a 65-yard touchdown. His third career punt return into the checkerboards. Did it against Tennessee Tech three years ago, Charlotte last year, and now against the Gamecocks. And this goes over Ortre Smith's head, and the Gamecocks get it at the 25. Well, we talked about how South Carolina was backed up. Joe Charlton hammers this punt. The problem is... He outkicked his coverage. And watch Warren Burrell right here. He plays it very smart. First of all, there's no other Gamecocks in the screen. But see Burrell puts those hands up. He don't want to get a block in the back. And look at Callaway just turn on the Jets. Splits the punt coverage team of the Gamecocks. They were spread out trying to run down that punt. Marquez Callaway hammers it into the end zone. Ryan Holinsky gets to work, and it's a throw to Nick Muse, who gets about eight. Transfer from William & Mary, Olympia makes it second and short. Obviously, it goes without saying, South Carolina, got to get going offensively. One of four on third downs. We've seen some inaccurate throws from Holinsky on third. Feaster, first down run. 
up near the 39. More college football tonight on the SEC Network at 7.30 Eastern. Our SEC Saturday night matchup has Mizzou traveling to Lexington to face Kentucky. We did this game last year. Mizzou dominated it until the second half when they didn't get a first down. And Kentucky came storming back. Meanwhile, Kyle Markway can't make the catch. It's second down for Will Muschamp. 75 yards on his first play, just 28 cents. And part of it is this. Look, that was not the best pass from Holinsky. He's got to get some help from his receivers. A couple of drops, one by Brian Edwards, that time by Kyle Markway. Easter, and all these delayed handoffs making Tennessee pay into Tennessee territory. That time, they pull the backside guard and tackle. Javon Gwynn, you see him coming around, Jalen Nichols. They just escort Feaster, who does a great job setting up those blocks. Feaster right at him to the 45-yard line. Offensive coordinator Brian McClendon using his featured tailback primarily on these draw plays. With Rico Dowdle out of the game, he had a knee injury versus Florida on his first carry. He'll be out a few weeks. Ron Denson is back in the game after being banged up a couple of series ago. You see, this is what they needed to get going, of course. Get that ground game established. Start chewing up some yards with a rushing attack. Here is Denson following his offensive lineman for a few. Daniel Batuli on the tackle. How about the fact that Batuli and Henry Toho Toho both on the field for the same time, both had targeting penalties in the last two games and never played at the same time. You talk about a true freshman and your leading tackle the past couple of seasons. They needed those guys both in this lineup. Batuli already with six, ta six tackles in this game. He did a great job defeating the block of Donnell Stanley to make that last point. Third and fourth, Denson, no way. Greeted immediately by Sean Schamberger. That time they brought second level pressure. Schamberger knifing into the offensive backfield. Nothing doing for South Carolina. Could never get this run play going. Look at Denson, he's hit right now. Doesn't even make it to the line of scrimmage. Schamberger, almost like he lined up in the offensive backfield. He was back there so quickly. Charlton will try to pin the balls deep and not give Callaway any chance of this. Charlton does his job as it is marked down at the seven yard line. Tennessee on top of the Gamecocks and a game certain to go to the wire. We think you would really shine in the Aflac program. Aflac? Coach Saban, we have health insurance. Did health insurance pay for everything? No. We still have bills. Aflac gives you money directly to help with those. Aflac. And your deductibles, knee brace, whatever you choose. Aflac sounds like a winner. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. We try. Get help with expenses health insurance doesn't cover. Aflac is an official sponsor of the SEC. Statement necklace or let your neck make the statement. Gold Bond Neck and Chest firms and repairs depleted skin. And new Neck and Chest Age Defense with SPF helps protect from visible signs of premature aging. Gold Bond, ultimate lotion, ultimate skin. Gear up for fall at Academy Sports and Outdoors. You can't put wings on a car. You can't see an accident coming. Or walk away from one like this. You can't make a car talk. How can I help you? You can't fight gravity. And you can't make one of the world's best SUVs even better. Go on, tell us what else we can't do. The all-new GLS. Are you ready to go? Possibly the safest, most spacious, most Mercedes SUV ever made. Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. 
Banking with Chime is honestly one of the greatest things that's ever happened to me financially. Not waking up to hidden fees or miscellaneous charges. My name is Tibian and I love Banking with Chime. Start banking with Chime today at Chime.com. True South circles the square in Hodgenville, Kentucky. Sweet onion burgers in a seven stool joint and in a truck stop down the road, biscuits stuffed with hot country sausage. Here in this farm town where Abraham Lincoln was born, tobacco was once a cash crop, bourbon is now an economic engine, and ideas about the South are in play. True South, Hodgenville, Kentucky, coming November 3rd. This series dates back to 1903. Each of the past seven have been decided by six or fewer balls own the all-time series with a 16-3 advantage in Knoxville, 25 and 10 overall. South Carolina's won three in a row and seven of the last 11 in the series though. And Will Muschamp has never lost to Tennessee as the head coach of Florida or South Carolina. Now remember last year, the Vols led 21-9 in the fourth quarter. The Gamecocks came back and won it. Jared Garantano had a 17-play drive that ended at the one-yard line the last time he touched the football. Hands to Ty Chandler, and Chandler dives ahead for a yard down to Alyssa. Yeah, guys, as far as the Tennessee offensive line, I'm being told right tackle Darnell Wright is dealing with a left leg injury. He's doubtful to return. Wanye Morris dealing with an upper body, but he's probable to come back. And we, as you were speaking there, Alyssa, Ernest Jones had his helmet come off, and he will go out of the game on this play. So he looks like he's got an injury there. He's already with seven tackles in this game, the sophomore from Waycross, Georgia. We'll check on Ernest. Let's go back to the studio in Dari. Yeah, TZ, how about Auburn battling back against LSU? They'd had a hard time generating much offense. Third and goal from the one. The pitch is stopped. About an inch or two from the goal line, and Gus Malzahn says let's go for it on fourth down against what has been a very stingy LSU defense. Bo Nix, the keeper, gets a little push from behind, and he's into the end zone. And Auburn now has the lead, 9-7, pending an extra point in Baton Rouge. Yeah, Darry, we saw them blow out Arkansas 51-10 last week, and since we left Fayetteville thinking... LSU is going to see the best defense they've seen all season. And I think that'll be the case. And they match up really well versus that quick passing attack for LSU because of Auburn's ability to win a defensive tackle. Alyssa just told you about the subs. Jameer Johnson, he moved too early. Ball start, offense number 58. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Well, happened quite a bit last week, albeit on the road versus Alabama here at home. Offense is at work, it's quiet. Jameer Johnson, he's been out of the lineup. They said the good news has been he was able to put on some weight while he was spelled. But that time, an early start and digging a hole for his offense in his possession. Snapping this one from near the four. Tano from his own end zone, incomplete. Throwing it into the UT bench with Palmer the nearest receiver. And there's a flag down. Holding call. The initial, or face mask, excuse me, is the initial call by referee Steve Marlowe. Yes. This on Jameer Johnson, back to back. And so watch him right here. Personal foul. He's got both hands. That's Look at that. Decline. Third down. Both hands up in the face mask of Aaron Sterling. So if you're going to get a face mask penalty, get your money's worth. He definitely did. All four penalties on Tennessee in this game, other than uh, have been on the offensive line. Third and 14, Ty Chandler. Able to get the edge, and he's shoved out by Sherrod Green near the nine. It's fourth down. 
And Sherrod Green is a guy that South Carolina coaches singled out. A guy that they want to keep him in the lineup if they can. Three linebackers on the field. He's got range. He's able to flex out, cover tight ends in the slot if need be. And that time, showing his speed to the sideline. And now South Carolina with the opportunity to capture excellent field position. Tennessee took one to the house when South Carolina had to kick from a similar sp spot on the field. Paxton Brooks from his own end zone. Low punt, Josh Vant, make that Brian Edwards at midfield getting the edge and inside the 45. And the Gamecocks have outstanding field position trying to regain the lead. Want to feel this motivated about managing your money? Whoa, savings! You got this! Yeah! Yeah! You earned it! Find that tiny little action figure! Yeah! Yeah, Sarah, wait a minute, that big! Yeah! With Regents Next Step, we give you the tools and guidance to help you and your money go further. Yeah, load that lunch, coach! Yes, sir. There's an easier way to bring hockey home. Center Ice lets you cancel your dinner plans, put the kids to bed, and spend every night with Ovi, Crosby, and McDavid. With up to 40 games a week, you'll never miss a burn slap shot, a bark off dangle, or a Kucherov deke. Paired with NHL Network, you can watch sellies, chirps, bar downs, and overtime winners. Order NHL Center Ice on DirecTV and don't miss another moment of action. Call 1-800-GET-SPORTS or visit directtv.com slash NHL. Why settle for ordinary when you can have extraordinary? At Touch of Modern, watches don't just tell time, they change the way you spend it. Bags are thoughtfully designed to never slow you down, and gear won't get in the way. And coffee tables are also refrigerators, keeping you at the center of the party. All it takes is a touch. Touchofmodern.com today. Auto Owners Insurance Halftime Report coming up. Dari Doreen Chiz will update LSU Auburn back and forth there, just like the game we're, of course, uh, watching. Why the Bama run game? We may see more of it. How efficient it has become. But what do you think here of Tennessee's lead? Two defenses here flying around playing fast and physical. Darren Tano playing earlier than we thought. The big special teams touchdown making the difference. Guys, we'll see you in a few. All right, looking forward to that. Coming up in a few minutes. Meanwhile, Ryan Holinsky has been handing off a bunch to Tavian Feaster. He's four for eight passing for 83 yards, and he's not been able to deliver a pass to Brian Edwards yet. Middle of the field incomplete to Muse, covered up by Daniel Batuli. Yeah, coming into this game, you can see that Ryan Holinsky has really struggled on the downfield throws. Last week, they kept shooting shots with impunity, like they just didn't care. They're just going to keep firing away 21% on those downfield throws. And there it is to Edwards, his first catch of the game as he goes inside the 40-yard line. He's caught a pass in all 46 games he's played in in his illustrious four-year career. And he's four catches shy now of passing Kenny McKinley for the most catches in Gamecock history. Shy Smith up here, looking that way, and it's inside the 35, and it is a first down. We talked about his prominence in their passing game, Shy Smith. And if you're Ryan Helinski, obviously wanting to get the ball to him, Shy Smith talked about it this week about the confidence they have in their quarterback, the confidence that they have to have. And Ryan Alinsky has to be the answer in this passing attack that really has to get rolling. Obviously, Shai Smith opening it up in this game. 
taking the first play to the house. Four targets in this one, and a big conversion on that third down. First and ten. A dangerous pass to Smith that was thrown a little bit behind him with Schamberger in coverage. Wednesday at 7 Eastern, Marty and McGee talk about Southern culture and football like nobody else can. Marty and McGee on the SEC Network and also on the ESPN app. You think McGee's wearing head-to-toe orange at the moment watching this? <laughs> Halinski to Markway and Kyle streaks down the sideline for a first down as McCullough pushes him out. 16-yard pickup for the redshirt junior in his fifth season. He only had six catches in his career before this year, and he has 17 in 2019. Going quickly, Holinsky has to throw it in the ground, and there comes the flag. And you see Daryl Middleton put his head down immediately. He's trying to get it to Markway again. See Neyland Stadium and the Tennessee head coach letting the officiating crew hear about it. Now look, this is a team last week that saw its starting quarterback get knocked out of the game. Took a couple of vicious shots from Alabama defenders. It's definitely high. You see it right there. came in there our ESPN rules analyst Matt Austin is reviewing this with us Matt what did you see yeah Taylor I mean the defensive player comes in he definitely lowers his head puts the crown of the helmet right into the quarterback's head quarterback is defenseless it's crown of the helmet I think this is a confirm it looked like at first glance and then certainly through the replay process and it has been confirmed on the field. It looked like it had several indicators, Stinch. There's no doubt. You know, and Matt just broke him down, of course, where you're seeing it. He lowers his head. There's a launch, attack, forcible contact. You're checking all the boxes. You can tell that obviously highly sensitive subject because you're talking about. Here comes another comes one another right flag. here. Yep. So Middleton will have to miss the rest of the game, and Jeremy Pruitt's real close to joining him. Extremely frustrated by the way the Alabama game was called last week, and that is boiled over into this week. Uh, he was displeased with how South Carolina had defended some of these pass routes earlier that time. He shouldn't be upset. That was a legit targeting call. The officials got it right, it was reviewed, it was confirmed. And he did say after the Alabama game when reviewing the film that there were several calls the officials got right. I think he'll say the same thing after watching that In one. In this instance, I think he will definitely agree. You gotta make sure if you're Tennessee to find a way to regain your composure. You know, you're, this opponent in South Carolina was gifted excellent field position by capitalizing. You still have an opportunity to get a stop here. First and goal inside the five. Feaster. Nothing. Daniel Batuli. Joined with Alante Taylor and Chavis Dawkins. Daniel Batuli. He showed up. He put his work pants on today. He's been excellent in pass coverage as well as you see South Carolina jumping the ball. Feaster again. Near the one. Nigel Warrior left him out of the end zone. Batuli in there, too. It's third and goal. Batuli was the one that ended up finishing off Feaster with another inside zone look. Third straight time, Feaster. No signal yet. Touchdown. Well, he was met in the hole by once again, Daniel Batuli. Unblocked, 
at the line of scrimmage and Feaster goes low, they will undoubtedly take a look at this play again. Watch Feaster go low. Does that ball cross the line of scrimmage before his right knee is down? That looks to me like the ball is in his left arm. He looks like he's down. The ball's in his left hand, right here. You see his right elbow is down? It looks to me like he was short of that goal line. And right knee down right there. Here's the ball. And there's the ball. I think he is clearly short of the goal line right there. Doug Linebarger, our replay official, we'll see if he believes that's irrefutable evidence to overturn the call. Let's see what Matt Austin has to say, our ESPN rules analyst. Hey, Matt. Yeah, Taylor, I, I agree with you and Matt. It does look like the knee hits the ground. Looks like the ball is short of the, of the goal line. Uh, this is going to be a tough one, though. The ruling on the field is a touchdown, and is that enough evidence to overturn? If it's not, then the call's gonna stand. I know that you had the headset on for years up to the press box going through that process. Let's see what Steve Marlowe has to announce. After further review, the ball carrier was down at the half yard line. Yeah. That's a good job. You know, look, and, and we're talking about a couple of very important calls that involve not only the replay officials, but the officials on the field the replay officials doing a good job that time overturning what was ruled a touchdown on the field and now south carolina is going to take another crack and remember tennessee was stopped on a fourth and goal play and a whistle on the field and the timeout will be called How about how physical this football game has been so far? Old school smash mouth. Pads popping, helmets popping off a couple of times. We got guys getting helped off the field back and forth. I mean, you never want to see anybody injured, but there's no doubt in this game, both these teams know what's at stake. You've known Brian McClendon a long time. What does he call on fourth and goal from the one? Well, they've done an excellent job, I think, especially in the field plays where they pull guards and they gain an extra blocker at the point of attack. You can create a double team if you do that. The question is, are you willing to risk that? Whenever you start pulling linemen across the ball, are you willing to try to do something like that? They had ball handling issues last week where they tried to run a toss to Tavian Feaster. The ball ended up on the ground. They ran the same play again. It was a G lead scheme, similar to Tennessee. And this time it looks like they're going to line up in the pistol. All, All times of confusion. Out. Yeah, you see Jeremy Pruitt ran down there. South Carolina is under center in a power eye formation. Tennessee, their second of the half. Came out with Nick Muse, who's been blocking in front of the tailback, which has been Feaster. It was Mon Denson before Pruitt calls timeout. So you see, you get a late substitution, trying to get to Quain Blakely in there as an extra D lineman. You got guys running off. But you see South Carolina, they're looking over there to the sideline as well. Jeremy Pruitt, he's trying to coach his defense at the same time he realized too late. You can't risk it. This is an important snap. Burns a timeout. But you can see South Carolina, they're going to be under center, eye formation, Nick Muse as a potential lead blocker to try to slam that football up in there. But as I mentioned last week, they're under center. Ryan Alinsky takes a snap, turns around, tries to toss it to Tavian Feaster. Bad exchange. That ball ended up on the ground. Muse and Denson still in there with Denson next to Halinski. Hand off to Mon. Touchdown, Gamecocks. Tennessee celebrated as if they had kept Denson out of the end zone. 
but the call is touchdown. The ball's in his left hand. Does it break it right there? Where's the ball? Simpson ran into it for touchdown. He had that ball in his left arm. I gotta tell you, it's Henry Toto right there. Remember, the entire goal line is the end zone. So the plane of the goal line means the vertical plane of the front edge as they'll look at this one more time. Both of those runs. Running back's got the ball in his left arm. Watch Toto come back. Batuli, they both meet him right at the goal line. Can you see where this ball, the ball's definitely in his left arm. Does it break the front edge of the plane? I think he, I think it barely does. It looks to me like Toe Toe, what he ends up grabbing is like the front arm, or the front, almost like the fist of his arm. The, review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. So stands, not confirmed. So you're talking about, and what replay is saying is that we didn't see enough to say it wasn't. The ruling on the field was a touchdown. And I will say, even the looks that we had, it's really difficult to see where is that football? And did it break that plane on the field it was ruled that it was? In total, it's nine plays, 44 yards, culminating with a one yard Mon Vinson touchdown. Parker White makes it 14 to 10. The drive featured a Daryl Middleton targeting foul that led to an ejection and to a Jeremy Pruitt unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. So they ended up pulling a guard. You see this all the way across. The question was, did the two linebackers of Tennessee deny the goal line? I got to tell you, that, that last look, I think that he did actually get in. Now, is it indisputable? The thing of it is, it was ruled a touchdown on the field. It has to be indisputable to overturn it. So Mon Denson, who was banged up a little earlier in the game, gets the handshake from Will Muschamp on his seventh career rushing touchdown. Had one last week against the Gators now this week against the Volunteers. Well, so we've seen a little bit of everything. But no doubt, field position playing a critical role in this football game. South Carolina getting the ball on the plus side of the field because of their ability to keep Tennessee in the shadows of their own goalposts. That has led to the last couple of sets of score. Balls get it at the 25-yard line. Academy Sports and Outdoors is making it even easier on you with in-store pickup that's all new and basically means you go to academy.com, order whatever you need, and come get it in-store. Get in, get out, it's back to having fun with your family. So great to see our great friend, Reese Rutledge's mom, yeah, that's right, Laura Rutledge, mom. on SEC Nation today down in the bayou. Jared Garantano is three of seven passing for 55 yards. J.T. Strout did start the game, and Jawan Jennings took the first snap. Garantano loads up. Wide open is Jennings, already past midfield, and look at the extra effort. Balls will go quickly. Jennings with another big time catch. This one for 27. Another explosive play for the Tennessee offense. Tano has time. Jennings inside the 20. Stays on his feet. Will not be denied. 48 yards.
Jennings catches for 75 yards, and the balls are back on top. Hard to believe that this guy wasn't even on the football team with the old staff two years ago, and now the team goes through him. Literally, the first play of the drive, they hit Jawan Jennings over the middle, does a great job on the post corner, comes back out. You see him, he's so difficult to bring to the ground. So that one, he ultimately gets tackled. On this one, he wasn't having it. He runs right through eBay, then Ernest Jones, that's a linebacker. And by the time Bukwamu had gotten to him, he was almost to the checkerboards. He's met with Marquez Callaway. Those two guys have figured prominently. And how about number two? Quarterback gets up off the mat and is able to deliver a couple of completions to the number one targeted receiver in this Tennessee offense. And the Volunteers back on top in this game. And catching an all-time great Harp back in the late 80s. Of course, went on to win Super Bowls with the Dallas Cowboys. One more to tie Robert Meacham. Fastest touchdown drive Tennessee has had this year, and the Gamecocks get it back with 234. You know, it's interesting. We were talking with Jeremy Pruitt, how they were going to deal with the quarterback position, and what transpired last week with Jared Garantano and the type of season that he's had. Lost his starting job, had to come in relief. But he also said, you know, look, I brought Jawan Jennings and I talked to him about the quarterback position, and Jennings was like, look, we need number two. We got to get him going. And you could see that was exemplified right there on that possession. Jawan Jennings, Jarrett Garantano getting on the same page to get the Tennessee offense in the end zone. Tavian Feaster running free for a first down. We talked about Tennessee trying to find a way to regain their composure defensively. South Carolina ultimately able to get in there. Now they got an answer defensively. No place to go after a minimal gain of five as Bryce Thompson lets him know he was right there. Tennessee's done a good job of tackling on the perimeter. Their secondary's done a good job with open field coming up, making tackles at the line of scrimmage. Polinski. Get it. That's Brian Edwards, and it's a catch down at the 43 of Tennessee. 17 more for the senior. South Carolina was trying to go fast. A Tennessee player slow to get up. Looks like it might be Aubrey Solomon. Aubrey Solomon shaking up. It's been limited since with shoulder and knee pain. Michigan transfer. South Carolina was going at warp speed. Abu Solomon, who's had some injury issues this season. A well underthrown ball from Holinsky on that one. Edwards, as you mentioned, he looked like a catcher with a pitch in the dirt that time on his knees just to field that ball cleanly. 140 and clock moving. Gamecocks with all of their timeouts. Feaster back to the ground, plows ahead to the 40, where Taylor makes the tackle. And Gerald Taylor, a guy came up with that big play early on in the first half to set up the short field. Good pass to Edwards. Under the 37-yard line, Kenneth George tackles him with 118, and the clock stopped, third down. We talk about the open field tackling, but that time, fighting off the block, and Kenneth George did a great job of shedding Nick Muse to come up and make that tackle to deny the yardage to gain to convert that first. Quick throw, Josh Van on the slant. First down, Gamecocks in the red zone. Tennessee brought boundary pressure. And Helensky deals it to the field side of the formation to Josh Van. That time he threw a strike. You can see it. He's got it in there, despite spates of inaccuracy. Feaster going to the top of your screen with under a minute left in the first half. Linsky throws it up above his head, incomplete. 
about these offenses suddenly in a game we expected to be dominated by defense? A couple of quarterbacks coming alive. So before that throwaway, Halinski four for four, 44 yards on this drive, and you're right, Taylor. All of a sudden, you're seeing guys ignite. Now, it's not surprising Juwan Jennings fueled the Tennessee scoring drive. Brian Edwards now getting involved. Josh Van, Halinski seemingly getting into a groove, especially when South Carolina start going up in the hurry up mode. Using this play quite a bit. It doesn't work this time as Feaster was greeted immediately by Batuli. Well, they were schooled up. Last week versus Florida, South Carolina hit two big draws in the red zone. That's the 10th tackle for number 35. Under 30 seconds left on the third and 11. And now Will Muschamp will call timeout. Yeah, it looked like Tennessee ended up burning that timeout. When they went empty, Tavian Feaster, it looked like there was some confusion in the coverage. And Feaster blown out of the offensive backfield all the way to the far side of the formation, and Tennessee looked confused as to who had him. Yeah, and Will will keep all of those timeouts. He wants to make sure that he's the last team with the football in this half. There's no doubt, and it's working out that way, although you've got to get this conversion. We've seen the third downs, and we've already mentioned it. South Carolina last week on a third and 10 plus, third and 11, a third and eight, they went to the draw. They've already burned that look on this possession. Tennessee State at home stoned it. Now where do you go with this football? We've seen Shai Smith, we've seen Brian Edwards, we've seen Kyle Markway. Where do you go with this football in the passing game? And can your protection hold up? We saw Daryl Taylor win on the edge on an earlier possession from his defensive end position to get Ryan Halitsky on the ground. Here's Taylor right here, number 19. Probably the best pure pass rusher on this Tennessee defense. Halitsky. catch by Brian Edwards. A jaw-dropping one-hander from Brian Edwards. OBJ, eat your heart out. He caught the middle of the football. It didn't look like he caught the point of it. It wasn't like he stops his ball. He stabs it in midair. And not only that, but to come down inbounds, albeit I think he was down shy of the goal line. What's crazy is Will Muschamp said Edwards' first career catch against Vanderbilt three years ago was one of the best he's ever seen. That one ties the school record for career receptions with Kenny McKinley. Well, he did it in style, breaking that record. Is that hand, that left hand on the white? Yes. It looks to me that his left hand came down out of bounds, just shy of the goal line. Look at how he catches this ball. See his hand right there, left hand. Out of bounds, it looks like, right there. Sorry after the push, but you see that left hand out of bounds, shy of the goal line. But an unbelievable catch. Now you've seen guys, they'll reach back and catch the point of a football and then cradle it down. It's like he stabbed the middle of that ball. Do we have a out. booth cam of our eyes? We couldn't even, I mean, I couldn't believe he caught it. I thought it bounced off his hand, it was a deflection. remarkable after further review the receiver completed the catch but went out of bounds at the half yard line yeah. it'll be first and goal south carolina the game clock will start on the snap well, the replay booth has been busy in this end zone right that's three reviews 
two overturns and, and of course one that just stood as a touchdown but an unbelievable effort by, by, by Brian Edwards Kenneth George was underneath that throw waiting for that clock to run Gamecocks do have all three of their timeouts here's the toss Finster touchdown few minutes of this second quarter have been don't blink material. Tavian Feaster gives the official something else to look at. I think he's down. Look, the ball's in his left hand. There's the knee. I think Feaster is short. And I think, you know, if Feaster keeps that ball outside, he decided to stick his foot in the ground and try to get underneath the block. I think he had a step. He could have run all the way to the pylon and gotten in the end zone. I bet you can guess who kept him out. Daniel Batuli, who's already in double digits with tackles today. He was certainly involved on the two runs on the previous South Carolina possession. Look at Batuli. Boom. Knee down. Ball. Left arm. Here's the goal line. He is short. A phenomenal effort by Daniel Batuli. And I do think easy to second guess from the booth, but Octavian Feaster, he's got the speed to keep that ball outside. Just outrun those linebackers who are coming from the core of the defense. Although Batuli, my goodness, in a first and a half of football, he had over 20 tackles a couple of years ago versus Georgia Tech. That's in an option offense. 23 tackles, he's got 11 already. After further review, the ball carrier was down at the half yard line. Please reset the game clock to 14 seconds. South Carolina will use a timeout to avoid a 10-second runoff. So will you explain to me why you got this? So Muschamp calls that first timeout. And the Gamecocks will have a little more time to take a look at this. How many years have been taken off the life of Jeremy Pruitt and Will Muschamp in the last few weeks? I mean, both these guys, I don't know. I think they thrive on impassioned coaching, we'll call it, right? Now, you look at it, these are close games, there's no doubt. And they were competitive in both games versus highly ranked teams, Florida and Alabama, both sides of the division, right? And you can see Jeremy Pruitt, and he's over there, and he's saying, look, he just said, thank you, I believe, for reading lips. So they're trying to make sure, look, the replay booth has been really engaged in this game. We've had a couple lines to gain, obviously. We had a boundary call. It's been very, very busy here towards the end of the second quarter. Coming up at halftime, you can watch the live performance of the Pride of the Southland on SEC Network Plus. Start streaming now on the ESPN app. Terrific crowd on hand from last Saturday in October watching this thrilling first half. This is the 11th play of the drive. Tavian Feaster and Mondenson, both in the backfield. Feaster is the first back standing at that five yard line. We've got a couple of tight ends to the left of the formation over here, Markway and Chandler Farrell. I think he wants the clock set at 14. There it is. It's Feaster plowing in easily. Touchdown, Carolina. Great push. Quick hitter. Downhill right now. Feaster in front of Denson. Just turn around. Stick it in the belly of your back and trust the interior portion of your offensive front to win. Tennessee certainly didn't go down without a fight. Daniel Batuli, my goodness, has been menacing along the goal line, but just hasn't been quite enough the last two possessions. 15th scoring drive of 75 plus yards. That's the fourth best in the SEC. And they've had two today as Parker White makes it 21-17 Gamecocks. 
you having any fun yet? Wow, this is unbelievable, man. I mean, think about it. So Jawan Jennings makes an unbelievable couple of plays, right? Muscling his way into the end zone. And we're talking about these premier receivers for both of these teams. And then Brian Edwards. I mean, how do you top what Jawan Jennings just did? I think Brian Edwards darn near did it. If he gets in the end zone, I'd say it's a topper. Regardless, all of a sudden, just this influx of scoring for both of these offenses. Yeah, we expected a defensive slugfest today, and we're seeing it, but we're seeing more execution from the offense than maybe most expected. With some terrific playmaking from Jawan Jennings and Brian Edwards. And a couple of quarterbacks that have been somewhat embattled. Well, there's frustration around the South Carolina passing game or lack thereof. Obviously, Jared Can Garantano and his difficulties this season. Both quarterbacks coming up big in the passing game to set up those scores. And Will Tommy, you don't want to kick it to Callaway or Chandler, and he kicks it over their head. So Tennessee has 10 seconds at their own 25-yard line. Tavian Feaster. First, that was Mon Denson that was left out of the end zone. Jawan Jennings, two plays, 75 yards, refusing to go down. And then Brian Edwards taking a page from OBJ's playbook. Marked out at the one a couple of plays later. Feaster plowing ahead and the Gamecocks are back on top. We'll see what Garantano decides to do with 10 seconds to go in the half. Why not? Here's it down the field and Palmer incomplete. Ran out of real estate that time. Makes that catch, and then you can take a shot at the end zone. Instead, spins him out of bounds. Now with just four seconds to play. Jared Garantano didn't start this game. In fact, it was Juwan Jennings who took the first snaps at quarterback. A little razzle-dazzle, JT Shrout. A couple possessions. And then Tennessee did a great job of inserting Garantano in there. So many different faces of quarterback. He almost got in there unnoticed. Last play of what was a remarkable first half. And Garantano is tackled shy of the 40-yard line. Gamecocks have the lead as Tennessee will receive the second half kickoff. There were five lead changes in that half. All kinds of adventure. You get special teams contributing. You get a goal line stand. A couple of goal line plays, big plays in the passing game. That first half was action packed. Jeremy Pruitt on the field with Alyssa. Coach, how would you evaluate the way your offense has been able to play so far today? You know, we didn't move the ball very well um, until the last drive. So we've got to be more aggressive um, calling the game. So give our guys a chance to have success. What do you want to see from your defense in the second half? Well, we gave up the first play, an explosive play. Just uh, clearly didn't line up correctly and didn't take um, three down the middle. So. Uh, just give them seven right off the jump there. And didn't play two minutes before the half there. Thank you, Coach. Thanks. This team's fighting its guts out once again, trailing South Carolina 21 to 17. We saw one of the best catches you'll ever see from Brian Edwards helping the Gamecocks to a four-point lead. Now it's the Auto Owners Insurance Halftime Report with Dari Noka. All right, guys, thank you much. It is the Auto Owners Insurance Halftime Report. Doring Chiswick here with me. That was an incredible catch. -in. Look, we're well on our way to what would be an eighth straight meeting between these two separated by six points or fewer. I mean, it's been that kind of a series. You go back to the first quarter yeah. with a series that did not result in points and a stop by South Carolina that's helped make this. Yeah, day. that was huge. You know, the momentum swing of the goal line stand down there I thought was big for the remainder of the half. But that's what this defense does historically. They're really good down in the red zone. They only let teams get into the end zone about 50% of the time. So even being able to force a field goal in that situation, you feel like a win. But to get the ball back, that was a, an even bigger stop for that defense. Yeah, and let's not forget, that was a 17-play, 77-yard drive. And I'll talk a little bit about Tennessee's offense because they've done some really good things. First quarter, they held the ball for 13 minutes. South Carolina had it for two. 
But Garantano, surprisingly enough, came into the game early, and he's playing well. 48-yard touchdown to Jawan Jennings. I think the offense right now can run the football. I saw signs of Ty Chandler breaking some runs. He's averaging almost five yards a carry. So Tennessee's offense, not bad. Four-point game, South Carolina. What looked like it was going to be about a 10-10 game. At Last three and a half minutes was action long yeah. Exactly. All right. This one's going on as well in Baton Rouge, Auburn, and LSU. Of course, LSU sitting at number two in the country, and that guy, Joe Burrow, is a massively big reason why. Down 3 nothing. Burrow sacked for the third time in the first quarter. They, as you've said, Chiz, a couple of times, have had him on the run the majority of the game. Yeah, I I've just watched this, off this defensive line at Auburn operate so many times that today's no different. Joe Burrow's had to bring the ball down, but he's made some really good decisions. Boy, he got popped right there and popped right back up. Later on this drive, there's no question Burrow's a, a tough young man and something like that probably only makes him mad, which makes him better. Here we go. Burrow on second and 10, fires. He's got Jamar Chase, 19 yards. This was a drive that started on their own 11. A sack pushed them back to their own two, and they took off from there. Chase again down to the 20. Nice for him to have that full array of receivers back today. Marshall caught a touchdown pass. Uh, Chase stepping up, making big plays, and there's that touchdown that I mentioned. Yep. Terrace Marshall back after missing multiple games with an injury. That drive went 89 yards, but because of lost yards, Burrow had 99 yards passing on the drive. 7-3 LSU on the punt. Uh-oh. Big mistake. Auburn recovers just outside the red zone. Now, could they do anything with it? Ensuing possession. Auburn fourth and goal. Gus decides to go. Bo Nix gets a little bush push from behind. They take the lead. 10-10 game now. This was, what was, this was just a draw play to help run out the clock, and it ends up with D.J. Williams going 41 yards. Yeah, and again, that's exactly what it was. Let's run out the clock. Hey, if we hit something big, then let's go from there, which they did. But again, uh, defense will prevail. Next play. No damage done. Why? Because Derek Stingley Jr., the fabulous freshman, gets the INT. They go into the locker room, 10-10. LSU had the ball first in the third quarter, and they have just had to punt. So Auburn will have it. Trying to win in Baton Rouge for the first time since 1999. This is kind of about what we all probably expected. It's what this series is. Well, if you're Auburn, that's exactly the way you needed it to play out. Your defense is getting pressure on Joe Burrow. You're getting turnovers. You're taking advantage of short field situations. Uh, I think, as you mentioned earlier, though, Joe Burrow, his feet, his ability to extend plays where he's finding receivers yeah. down the field, finding ways to scramble for first downs, if it wasn't for his athleticism, there would have been about five or six sacks in that first half for Auburn's defense. Yeah, let's think about this. Three sacks, five tackle for loss in the first half for that front four, right? But I will say this. Auburn is making them earn everything yeah. down the field. You don't see receivers running wide open. If there's catches down the field by these wideouts, it's because they are working for it. These guys are really covering well. Margin for error, very slim, but Joe Burrow's putting yeah. the ball where he needs to put it. And in fairness, though, Auburn's getting a Bur I mean, uh, LSU's getting a Knicks to it. Very uncomfortable back there to be a quarterback yeah, on either, either side. On yeah, either side of this thing. All right, it's a 10-10 game, early third in Auburn football. We'll keep you posted. Meanwhile, what's going on? At Neyland Stadium, well, you've got a band on the field. The pride of the Southland marching band can be seen right now over on SEC Network Plus. Meanwhile, this is what Jeremy Pruitt was talking about as he was headed off the field with a listen. We spotted him one early. First offensive play of the game, Ryan Halinski to Shy Smith, 75 yards. Gamecocks lead he is free. This halftime report is presented by Auto Owners Insurance. For whatever lies ahead, Auto Owners Insurance. Find your agent today at auto-owners.com. It used to be just me and her. But more people makes it more fun. Football at Hooters. Wings, beer, and the best fans on the planet. Hooters. Pain thinks it makes the rules, but the rules just changed. New Icy High Lidocaine Dry Spray. Instant dry technology. No mess, no residue, fast acting relief. Rise from pain. New Icy High Lidocaine Dry Spray.
I've scored some pretty good deals on Poshmark, like the Bread Air Jordan 1. This is my favorite sneaker of all time. So I was able to find a pair really easily without spending a crazy amount of money. Get $5 off your first order. Download the free Poshmark app now and use offer code LOVEPOSH. Let it fly. In the SEC, there's a deep pattern in these things we do that our grandparents still do. Let it fly. To the outside world, it's an uncommon rhapsody for all eternity. No rhyme, no reason. Let it fly. Do we do what others do? No. And we do it more. Welcome back to the Auto Owners Insurance Halftime Report. Nick Saban in Alabama for the first time since he got there, 2007. A starting quarterback is missing a start because of an injury. Unbelievable that it's the first time it's happened, but that is the case, of course, with Tua Tungavailoa. Out with that high ankle sprain and Mac Jones making his first career start. The third year sophomore for Alabama as the Tide take on Arkansas on ESPN at around 7 o'clock Eastern time. You look at the two, it's obviously it's a drastic difference. It's because two is Tua and Mac Jones is behind Tua. 20 career games. Jones has completed 25 of 45 passes for 360 and two scores and one INT. CD and Chiz might be a good chance to see a run game that has shown signs of development. Well, Alabama's offense is going to need to run the football today to take some of that pressure off of Mac Jones and Chiz. It may not be Alabama's historical success running the football, but I've seen them get better and better over the last couple of weeks in terms of the run game. Let's take a look at some of what they did last week against Tennessee here on the counter. Watch the tackle get great push here. And then this guy, this is probably one of the biggest reasons why they're playing so well right now is the return of Deontay Brown. He's going to block down here, watch him wash the nose, and then work up to the second level. Backside guard's going to come here and kick out, and the wing is going to lead up through the hole. So as we let it run, perfect execution of that. Great job there. Now look at that, right? Look at that gap. That's a perfect hole for Najee Harris to be able to run through. That's about 10 yards before he even gets contacted down the field. Yeah, great physicality up front and great push. Let's take a look at the second play. Now this is a big play in the game. This is the outside zone. And on this play, it's basically sealing off the edge and giving your back a chance to either cut it up inside or outside. So as we watch this come into play, the key block here is Tennessee is gonna bring pressure from the outside. Watch Forrestal secure the edge of the offense. And what that does for the tailback is that gives him choices. You're going to see Robinson start on an angle right now, and he's going to read the block of 87. Mm -hmm. Forrestal, watch it unfold. He goes, he stays on that track, and watch what happens when he seals the outside edge. And now what you have is you have an outside bounce for the tailback, and there's only one guy can bring him down, CD. That's the safety. It's one-on-one, -on -one, and he does a great job of really being physical and finishing the run. As a play designer, you couldn't ask for much more than that. Now, let's take a look here. This is one of the things we talked about. Offensive line has to play in unison, and I love this right here. This is the, the situation where the center and the guard, these two guys are going to have to block these two guys. Well, watch the way they do that in terms of unison. You're going to have the center here Try to reach the outside of that three technique after the guard is able to post him and work up to the second level. Which, that's a long way to go that's on those a, blocks. For sure, a long way for them to go. As you talked about earlier, the running back's track. Look at him, press it outside, and then cut back. He sees the hole right here, pressing that thing, and then allowing everything to sift out, setting up his blocks extremely well. Another big run. Now, these aren't home run runs that we're seeing from Alabama right now, but they do a couple things. They move the chain, they possess the football, and it allows the offense to control the game, something that Nick Saban has been desperately wanting to see from Yeah, the and again, taking over the line of scrimmage, just methodically pounding you so that at the end of the game, you can go for a lot of yards after contact. Gentlemen, good stuff. How about Mississippi State, Texas A&M, as seen earlier on the SEC Network? Eric Schrader, 
and company. This uh, team has won three in a row against Texas A&M. Of course, Schrader was not in charge of uh, any of those as he's just a freshman. And here he's picked off by Devin Morris. Three Aggie defensive uh, or three state turnovers in this game forced by A&M. Ensuing possession, Kellen Mond, Kendrick Rogers spins out of a little bit of trouble and you kidding me never went down touchdown yeah I'll wow. tell you, and and Dari they brought a full blitz right into Kellen Mond's face he knew he was going to take the hit he got rid of the ball Rodgers did the rest just remember who CD told us to look out for last night yes sir Jalen Weidemeyer 52 yards for the touchdown Mond had five total touchdowns in a route at home 49 to 30. Check this play out, guys. This is early on Auburn. Or for actually, their first play offensively of the second half. D.J. Williams saw the big one before half for 41 yards. Here's another one. This one goes 70. It's set up a field goal attempt that is being attempted as we speak, and I'm just going to keep going until I can tell you it is good. Auburn 13, LSU 10 in Baton Rouge. Marquez Calloway breaking one for Tennessee. It's a 21 17 lead for Cocky here. We're back in a moment. I thought I'd lost my business in that fire, but my agent was there before the flames were out. He said, Together, we're going to rebuild. We've got 25 employees who depended on it, and that's all that mattered to me. My independent agent and auto owners made sure we didn't skip a beat. I mean, we didn't miss a single payroll. Incredible. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. Real Steel. Find yours for the space you've always wanted. Pick up the BG50 blower for only $139.95 or grab the MS-170 chainsaw for just $179.95. Find yours at steeldealers.com. A lot happens over 225 years. Traditions take hold. Limits are tested. Champions reign. Leaders arise. Memories are made. A legacy grows. For the past 225 years and the next, Tennessee volunteers are lighting the way. Our nightcap coming up from Lexington, Kentucky, and Missouri. Cats have owned the series of late, having won the last four against Missouri. Missouri just trying to figure things out away from Columbia, where they are 0-2 away from their home stadium. No Kentucky win in the series more dramatic than this one a year ago. One untimed play from the two-yard line, the game on the line. Once we got down there, um, you know, it, it was go big or go home. Fortunate to get the untimed uh, down and looking for the right opportunity to score. We had it in our mind that we were going to go to, to CJ. Pop pass to CJ. Play is designed to, you know, watch CJ first. Ball snap. I saw CJ break. When I see him open, I knew he was gonna grab. He like he like State Farm. He in good hands. Wilson will throw. End zone touchdown. CJ Conrad. When he caught it and the <laughs> fish threw his hands up, I just tried to find him and gave him the biggest hug I could. And that's the bottom line. That's CJ Conrad. Dead zone. It felt good um, to do it on the road. Um, against a hungry team like Mizzou, it, it, was a, it was a good feeling. That was the best moment in my life. You know, just, just to see everybody happy on the sideline, fans is happy. I couldn't ask for nothing else. You guys just find a way to win. Celebration after in the locker room with Coach Stoops, crowd surfing. It was pretty cool. To finish it off that way was very exciting. Very fortunate to come out on top. Again, that is our nightcap tonight, 7.30 Eastern Time, Kentucky and Missouri. Cats looking for a fifth straight win in the series. They will have to do it without linebacker Cash Daniel, who is out with an upper body injury. Uh, 
All right, second half from Knoxville coming right up. Look at the catch from Brian Edwards. Play of the game. Set up a go-ahead touchdown. Will Muschamp 7-0 all-time against Tennessee. He's one half from being 8-0. This halftime report is presented by Auto Owners Insurance. For whatever lies ahead, Auto Owners Insurance. Find your agent today at auto-owners.com. You don't think it'll happen to you, and you surely don't think it'll happen twice. I've lost two homes in my lifetime. First, it was a fire. My agent was right there and helped me rebuild. Then the tornado hit and destroyed everything again. Both times, my independent agent and auto owners took care of me like someone takes care of family. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. I am made of 200-year-old tradition and endless memories. I am made of unrelenting inquiry, home to those who raise the bar and raise it again. I am made of bright conviction, of grit, of growth, of greatness. I am South Carolina. Having dental problems, it affected everything, including my ability to be the best parent I could be. I used to go to these events and I just wanted to like sit in the back. As a father, it really hurts. It's your mouth, but you feel bad from head to toe. So when I found Clear Choice, everything changed right there and then. Our job is to cater to your needs. Our job is to find a solution. After the dental implant procedure, there's a transformation that happens almost immediately. Having us all under one roof really makes it easy for the patient. I can be that person that I want to be for my son. This is me now. Being able to go back out and do all the things that I wouldn't or couldn't do before. One of the more entertaining halves you'll ever see in the SEC. Gamecocks lead Tennessee 21 to 17. As we start the third quarter, Shai Smith, a 75-yard touchdown on the first play of the game. Brian Edwards' career-tying catch was the catch of his life. And Juwan Jennings, he might still be breaking tackles down on that field <laughs> after that last touchdown that he had. Don't blink, ladies and gentlemen. We had three lead changes in the last three minutes and 16 seconds. And if you're Tennessee, you know, you've got to be a little bit disheartened because you couldn't have started the game off worse. You give up the 75-yarder for a touchdown. And then you don't finish the half the way you wanted to. Really, everything in between, you can look at Tennessee starting to really sp almost take control of this football game. But the field position played a big role in the scoring opportunities and certainly the way the Volunteers managed the end-of-half scenario there before the end of the second quarter. Well, if we're going to show highlights, we have to start with what has to be number one on SportsCenter later tonight. Brian Edwards with this incredible acrobatic catch that ties Kenny McKinley for the most in Gamecocks history with 207. Meanwhile, Juwan Jennings had two catches on this drive for 75 yards and somehow made it to the checkerboards on that play. Tennessee trails 21-17. They had a 17-play drive and got to the one and didn't score in that half. Tano wants to load up. Deep ball. He's got Callaway. Caught. That ball hung up just a little bit. And I thought Israel McGuamu was going to be able to make up ground because Callaway had more than a couple of steps. McQuamu playing off coverage. Callaway just runs him down. Look at this on the post. See McQuamu able to recover, but Callaway again able to come down with a contested catch. Great concentration from number one. 48 yards. How about what was happening with Jameer Johnson throwing? 
like an elbow band off of the field there. And another catch made. That's a good one by Josh Palmer. It's second down. Yeah, uh, Jameer Johnson, I think his neck roll somehow was messing with him. So see him messing with it, he can't quite get it the way he wants it. So he just says, forget it, I'm gonna rip it off. <laughs> and I like the way, look, he throws it towards the South Carolina. He starts to throw it towards <laughs> his sideline. Already wearing that big contraption on his left arm. Good distance on that. Yeah. Yeah. Impressive. Second and four. Here's the toss to Chandler. It'll be third down. Alyssa, what did Will Muschamp have to say about that first half? Yeah, guys, I caught up with him about the way his defense has been playing. He said if he wants to see one thing specifically, it's stopping 15. Juwan Jennings, of course, had a couple of huge plays back in that first half. Going into halftime, Jeremy Pruitt said he wants his offensive play calling to be more aggressive, and I think we've seen that so far from Tennessee as well, guys. Just remarkable to see the lead changes and the drama as Eric Gray checks into the game on a third and five. He's in the slot to the top of your screen. Antano, quick throw, it's dropped. RJ Roderick hits Tyler Bird after the drop, fourth down. Roderick hit Bird pretty late on that one. I mean, he could have easily avoided it. You know Tennessee fans seeing this replay will have an opinion on that. Well, he caught him with his shoulder, but it was definitely to the head or neck area. And Tyler Bird, I guess they're saying he made contact with his arm first, but that definitely looked late. And Samaglia from 39 to make it a one-point game, and he pushed it to the right. Samaglia was the most accurate kicker in Tennessee history before this miss, just the second of the season. What does it mean to be the official bank of the SEC? It means Regions is your bank for waking up with the sun, pulling all-nighters, paying your dues, putting in the work, and getting where you want to go. We're officially cheering on the most passionate fans because we're the bank that understands that greatness is in the grind. Regions, official bank of the SEC. The Napa bag sale can save you 20%. Me? Yeah, you. Cool. You mean very cool. Buy a 99 cent Napa bag and save 20% on three or more items that fit inside. So come save some money, karaoke car singer and oddly clean garage lady. You too, hardcore DIY guy. Truck stuff. You betcha. That's 20% off three or more items with the Napa bag. Quality parts, helpful people. That's Napa know-how. Napa know-how. I found a way to relieve my constipation that's both gentle and fast. New Dulcolax liquid works naturally with the water in my body to provide gentle relief in as little as 30 minutes. New stimulant-free Dulcolax liquid puts you comfortably in control. Shine your light. They will see it. Oh, they will all see it. The world is watching the SEC, focused on our every move. There is no hiding here. That target on our chests, that beacon on our backs, burn them bright. Shine your light. Light up the night. Light the faces. Light the way. True South circles the square in Hodgenville, Kentucky. Sweet onion burgers in a seven stool joint. And in a truck stop down the road, biscuits stuffed with hot country sausage. Here in this farm town where Abraham Lincoln was born, tobacco was once a cash crop, bourbon is now an economic engine, and ideas about the South are in play. True South, Hodgenville, Kentucky, coming November 3rd. Matt Austin, what do you think of R.J. Roderick's hit of Tyler Bird here? Well, I'm not crazy about it. It's a little bit late, but it's not really that forcible of a, of a hit. He does take a couple steps. It's 
you know, it's one of those ones that either way you call it, you're going to make one of the teams really upset. So uh, it's, it's really a tweener. I'm fine with letting it go. Thank you, Mr. Austin, for all of your explanations today. In this 21-17 game, Brian Edwards has more catches than any player in Gamecocks history. That is his 208. Well, his 207 was really exciting. A lot more exciting than that one. Uh, not that it wasn't <laughs> consequential. Yeah, that one only gained four yards as we have a false start. Mock cheer from the Tennessee fans. False start. Offense. Not all players were sent before the snap. Five yard penalty. Second down. Second penalty on South Carolina today. Tennessee has five. Both coaches on edge. And this tight football game is the Gamecocks lead at 21-17. Jeremy Pruitt, two and five, said those first two games of the season were on me. Should have beaten Georgia State, blew it against BYU. But ever since then, you've seen marked improvement, certainly against Georgia, then against Mississippi State, and last week against Alabama, as Fister is ahead to the 25. Let's go back to the studio. Say hello to Dari. Guys, big turn of events in Baton Rouge, LSU trailing Auburn 13-10. Got down to the two-yard line, went for it on fourth down, and the Tigers stopped him. That's now two times they've been inside the Auburn two, and they've come away with three total points, guys. Wow, how about that? That is Auburn's kind of football game down in Tigerland. Here, it's third and seven for South Carolina. Polinski under pressure, down he goes. Daryl Taylor again. Working against the freshman, Jalen Nichols. And he's gonna come underneath the block. Just oversets, feels that weight outside. It actually ended up running a game. But Daryl Taylor got through so cleanly that he was able to get upfield that's twice now where Daryl Taylor has showed up big on third downs. False start. Offense number 10. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. His sacks come in bunches. He had two against Mississippi State two weeks ago. Two more today. Well, the entire team got into it. First Mississippi State, seven sacks a couple of games ago. Obviously, this one with the penalties really hurt South Carolina in a field position game. Charlton in his end zone. And a good punt, Eric Gray from his own 45. And he is tackled in to Gamecocks territory. Daryl Taylor with his 16th career sack, giving the Vols the football back. Suspicious Fansville by Dr. Pepper. Hey, you're late. I was just getting more Dr. Pepper. Is that Dijon Mustard? Are you seeing another grill? No. Was it her? What does she have that I don't? She has an onion volcano. Look. She uses propane. This is natural, girl. Tastes the same to me. What? Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. I'm a parking guy, and on game day, my moves are my money maker. And the more cars I stuff into this yard, perfect. The more money I make. <laughs> Seriously? Come on, pal, you got this. There you go. You got room for one more? Oh yeah, right over there. Hey, cheap parking. Get what you paid for. And if you got cut rate car insurance, you might end up paying for this yourself. So get all state and be better protected from mayhem. Like me. Braveheart Center for Place and Purpose. We are a program for young adults who have disabilities and face more moderate to severe life challenges. It just brightens my day, just seeing the kids happy and doing things that you don't think they could do. They're just awesome. 
there's so much going on inside of every individual who has a disability. Even if they don't say a lot of words, they have a strong desire and ability to communicate. Learn more about Bravehearts at felt.com slash project hometown. This is Fracture. Just upload an image, place your order, and it'll show up at your door, beautifully printed, directly on glass. And this isn't just another frame, not just another canvas. This is new. This is a Fracture. Visit FractureMe.com and print one today. Dory and OK in studio, guys. We showed you how LSU was stopped on fourth down at the one-yard line. They ended up getting it back after a punt. And then Joe Burrow picked off at the two by Roger McCreary. But LSU has since gotten it back after an Auburn punt. We'll keep you posted, 13-10 Auburn. Here you see the standing starry with Alabama 4-0 in conference. LSU undefeated, but Auburn still controls its own fate. They play both of those teams in front of them. Well, they're giving the Bayou version of the Tigers all they want. Joe Burrow with an uncharacteristic turnover. Here, Jarrett Garantano playing most of the game at quarterback, dropped by Gray was a forward pass incomplete. Garantano did not start the game today. J.T. Shrout did. Brian Maurer banged up again, went through the concussion protocol last week. Garantano addressed the entire team after the game on Sunday. They go through the good, the bad, and the ugly. He said, Coach Bruitt, when you get up and address the ugly, I want to address the team. It's a sign of a leader. We'll say that. You gotta be accountable, take responsibility, and he has. He played pretty well versus Alabama. Stats aside. You turn on the film, he looked good. Load up here, and Palmer got it. Twenty-two yards from the man from Ontario, Canada. This stands, and it looks like his left foot was in bounds. They're hurrying up to try to run a play. The fifth 20 plus yard play for Tennessee. Good for them for doing it that quickly as Jordan will get a yard. Alyssa. You guys talked about Jared Garantano addressing the team last week. Well, there's no question about how his teammates feel about him after doing that either. His offensive lineman, Trey Smith, said he considers him to be a brother. They lived together freshman year, and he said it was JG who was the one that made a constant effort to check in on Trey last year when he was dealing with those blood clots in his lungs. He said a lot of people have no idea the work that Jarrett puts in behind the scenes when it comes to watching tape and getting ready for game day, guys. Definitely has a good heart. Playing within the system so far today and finding Palmer again, and that's a first down catch. Throwing for over 200 yards in this game and a touchdown. He's been efficient, there's no doubt. And able to hit some downfield throws, 9 to 16, 214 yards. See that touchdown on his resume as well. Protected the football relatively well. And now Tennessee driving with the connection. Couple of completions now to Josh Palmer. We saw in the first half, it was Israel Mukwamu. And you see, J.C. Horn kind of fakes the jam. It's a good no call. Yep. Now your feet get tangled up a little bit. Receiver ends up going down. That's a good no call by the official on that side. You see J.C. Horn, you see him try to roll up, man coverage. Acts like he's going to jam you. See if he can change your release. It was just enough to throw Josh Palmer off. Toss ahead. This is Keaton, who is tackled for a huge loss in the backfield by Aaron Sterling. A loss of four. Man, I, I, they, they missed a face mask by Aaron Sterling. And the fans didn't, of course, like it on this side of the field. And Jamel Keaton, watch this. Watch Aaron Sterling, he gets his hand up. Mm. 
you got to flag's got to come out right there. And that's right there out in the open. The flag's got to come out for that face mask. That was pretty egregious. Spun his head around. It looked like steer wrestling on that tackle. He's got a half the distance to the goal and penalty. Now third and 14. And Jeremy Pruitt's down there going, what's got to happen? You know? Cox calling their first time out. of emotion for the Tennessee Volunteers in the last couple of weeks. Jeremy Pruitt went and got the white hat over here talking with the line judge. Now it's a game of charades. It'll show exactly what he just saw. The replay shows it. It's definitely a, a tough no call. I mean, it's a face mask. It's right there. I do want to clarify Princeton Fant was the person they tossed that ahead to a kind of a hybrid between a tight end and a wide receiver that lost four yards on Sterling's tackle. It's third and 14. Well, to say the no call is huge right there is a massive understatement. And given the way things have transpired, you can see Juwan Jennings in there. He's like, I got this. In there with his teammates, talking with Jared Garantano. Jennings has been able to come up big in these moments before. You have to know he figures prominently in the plans to try to salvage this drive. Garantano comes up to the line on this third and 14. To the end zone. Jennings! He has that ball. Touchdown! dangerous collision after he made the catch with photographers and Gamecocks. A career day for him, over 130 yards receiving and two touchdowns. You can almost see it coming. I mean, really, Jawan Jennings is over there in the huddle with his teammates. And it almost looked like he said, Coach Pruitt said, we got this. And they come right back to number 15, their leader, not only on offense, both sides of the football. Well, Garrett Tano got crushed as he let go of this football. He hung it up there. Last week versus Alabama, he had Jawan Jennings open for a touchdown, overthrew it. That time, hung the ball up just enough, stayed up there for an eternity. Jennings fights and comes down with the football for six. Samaglia makes it 24-21. See Jennings over there talking to T. Martin. Watch the quarterback for Tennessee. He's going down. He knows he's going to take a hit. Number 15 does too. The Tennessee leads with a touchdown. I thought I'd lost my business in that fire. But my agent was there before the flames were out. He said, together, we're going to rebuild. We've got 25 employees who depended on it. And that's all that mattered to me. My independent agent and auto owners made sure we didn't skip a beat. I mean, we didn't miss a single payroll. Incredible. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. True South circles the square in Hodgenville, Kentucky. Plead onion burgers in a seven-stool joint, and in a truck stop down the road, biscuits stuffed with hot country sausage. Here in this farm town where Abraham Lincoln was born, tobacco was once a cash crop, bourbon is now an economic engine, and ideas about the South are in play. True South, Hodgenville, Kentucky, coming November 3rd. 
At some point in their life, 52% of all men will experience erectile dysfunction, but most of them never get treated. Now there's Roman, the digital health clinic for men. With Roman, you can get genuine medication prescribed by a U.S. licensed physician, all from the comfort of your home. If medication is right for you, Roman delivers it with free two-day shipping and in discreet packaging. Get started with a free online visit today at GetRoman.com slash TV. Roman, let's take care of it. I'm going to shout it from the rooftop. Shout it. Tell everyone. Let's go. From the rooftop. This is the place for the best of the game. Oh, what a fool. Let them know hundreds of live games are at their fingertips all season long. Oh, that's basketball. Watch all the teams for your team. Oh, what a play! And of course, you can stream on your phone, TV, or tablet. Free preview October 22nd to October 29th. To order, call 1 800 Get Sports or visit att.com slash NBA. Jared Garantano, he got grilled as he let go of that last touchdown throw. You see him holding that left wrist. See right there, number 15, Jawan Jennings, right side of your screen. He took a shot too. Came down with that catch in the back of the end zone, ran out of real estate. Ended up in a big old pile in the back of the end zone here in Neyland Stadium. But once again, another lead change. The Volunteers able to answer. Brooks. And this is Shy Smith coming out. Mistake as he is trapped inside the 15-yard line. Here's Jawan Jennings in the huddle with Jared Garantano and Jeremy Pruitt. And then on the next play, on a third and 14, Garantano lobs it up there. Jennings takes this huge hit. We had, in fact, some of our camera operators up there. Oh. Brunson deep bleeding Garantano but it's six for the volunteers taking out a couple of people down there including our guy Wiggy who's a beloved member of our crew I know Wiggy wasn't phased get that camera on the play the whole time delay of game offense number three five yard penalty first half Will Muschamp's quarterback True freshman Ryan Holinsky now trailing Tennessee 24-21, not getting that playoff in time. These procedure penalties for South Carolina on this end of the field. You're already backed up with an ill-advised kick return by Shai Smith. And then a delay of game. They're going backwards, shooting themselves in the foot with these penalties. Complete Toe Toe in coverage. Back to the studio in Darinoka. Yeah, guys, told you about some missed opportunities for LSU, but eventually, after forcing Auburn into another three and out, Clyde Edwards Hilaire gets into the end zone, missed the extra point, they lead by three. Sorry, Josh Van had that one in his bread basket. Incomplete Sean Schamberger in coverage, third and 15 for the Gamecocks. And this crowd has been ignited here in the second half. We've talked about some physical play. They've been upset with some calls. Now they're fired up for their defense to force this third down conversion and turn this offense, turn this offense around. And hit as he throws, there was a whistle before that snap. So loud in here that Steve Marlowe didn't even hear the whistle from his own crew. The linesman had to come from the far side and let him know, hey, I dropped a flag on that. 
So third and forever, but also it was a dead ball. It was a pre-snap penalty. So you're allowed to send your offense, get your offense right back out on the field, but the odds of converting here, this is an incredibly dangerous down. I think you run the football. Check something down quickly, trying to pick up some easy yards, punt this football away. Empty backfield. No handing it off here. We'll let the game clock reset. Listen to Neyland Stadium. Daryl Taylor. Quick throw caught by Feaster gives the Gamecocks some breathing room as they get it out to the 10. Well, if you're Tennessee, you get exactly what you wanted. On the heels of a touchdown, defense comes right back out and answers. South Carolina, the penalty, the kick return, which should have never been, and then an inability to gain really any meaningful yards have to punt this away. After taking the last punt return off, Callaway is back. He's already taken one to the house. 65 yards. Standing at the 50. Charlton, one of the best in the business, kicks this over his head, landing at the 35. What a terrific job by one of the best punters in college football. That went for 57 yards. A phenomenal pump by Charlton right there. Let's go down to the field, Melissa. Guys, we've had a couple of Tennessee games this year, and I cannot say I've seen the sidelines look like it has for the last couple of minutes. It is hype down here. Now, of course, quarterback Jarrett Garantano, we saw go out a couple of minutes ago dealing with that wrist. He is still in the locker room. I see JT Shrout and Juwan Jennings talking with quarterbacks coach Chris Winkie right now. And Shrout is... Well, actually, it's Jennings on this first snap. He took the first snap of the game and ran it for a first down. There's two receiving touchdowns today. And he puts his head down and stays on his feet to the 35-yard line. Five catches for Jennings, and now a couple of rushes for 15 yards. And Shrout comes onto the field. Gonna get Jennings. I don't know if they're going to sub him out or not. So you see JT Shroud come out there. Very limited playing time there in the first half. Jared Garantano taking over for him. Garantano obviously being evaluated after taking a pretty wicked shot on the last touchdown. Shroud steps up, underneath Palmer at the 44-yard line, first down, Tennessee. Josh Palmer coming alive as he looks a little bit gimpy after that catch. They substitute him off the field. Tyler Bird coming in there. Good job by J.T. Shrout climbing in the pocket, buying time to deliver that completion to Palmer. You see he's been targeted eight times this week. Now Garantano, let's make that, excuse me, make that Jawan Jennings at quarterback up to the 45-yard line. We talked about it, high school quarterback. He's attempted passes here as well. So far, just a ball carrier when he's getting those direct snaps. You see Jennings. There's a competitor. That guy is laying it on the line for his teammates. Name me a quarterback, and they're rotating into the game right now. J.T. Shrout under center on second and nine. Wants to throw the deep ball. Callaway got it. Touchdown, Tennessee. 
City. How about the reaction from Brian Maurer? Guamu, who ended up getting beaten on that route from Callaway. No safety help deep. Looks like they checked up. McQuamu, who was playing deep coverage, just got toasted. Callaway, three times where he's been able to get open deep and come up with big catches. It's a 10-point lead as Brent Samaglia makes the extra point. The redshirt freshman from Santa Clarita, California, J.T. Shrout, throws his first college touchdown, 55 yards. Laser X, the number one home laser tag game on the planet. Join Red, Blue, or Go Rogue, featuring the original Long Range Micro Fusion in the new Morph Blaster that morphs from a target game into a full-size blaster with the 300-foot range. Plus, a detachable armband receiver with an unlimited number of players. All gear works together. You can get the Laser X Morph Double Set for $49.99, plus $9.99 processing and handling. Batteries not included. Extra blasters sold separately. Must be 18 or older to order. That today's show was good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was fun. Oh. What do you think? Skill diagonal. Dari Noka in studio. We update LSU taking advantage of Auburn's inability to move the football here in the second half. Joe Burrow touchdown. They're now up 10. Auburn, three straight, three and outs, a total of eight yards, guys. 10 point lead for the home team there. 10 point lead for the home team here with Jared Carantano coming out of the locker room, talking to the starter from the last few weeks, Brian Maurer cheering on the other quarterback, J.T. Shrout, after his 55-yard touchdown pass. Aren't there like three other quarterbacks that have to be included in that somehow? Here's Callaway, the stack. And here's Mukwamu. And you'll see his safety's kind of low in the middle of the field. Callaway's clean, gets a clean release. Watch him break towards the post. Mukwamu's beaten right there. And we've seen this route before. But McQuamu, the ball kind of hung up a little bit earlier in this game, and McQuamu was able to recover. Look at this. That is a beautifully thrown football from J.T. Shroud. And that is a completion to Shai Smith, as meanwhile, Ryan Holinsky tries to get this South Carolina Gamecocks offense back on track. They've had a couple of three and outs in a row and lost yardage on each of those drives. A quick game is something that Holinsky loves. He throws a couple of short passes, one for five, that one for four to Edwards. It'll be third and short. You got to get something rolling. And as you mentioned, that quick game is where Holinsky is most comfortable, seemingly gets in the rhythm best. You want to get off the field on a third and one, and Denson hesitated. He didn't get there. Henry Toto Toto plugging the gap. And it's a three and out. On a short yardage play, you don't have a lot of time to redirect. And Mon Denson ends up bending that run back right into the teeth of the defense. So they're trying, you gotta try to hit it right downhill. Great job inside by the Tennessee defensive front. They stood up Javon Gwynn and made Mon Denson bend that run. 
Carlton with the rain coming down on Rocky Top now. It's a great punt, but this one sails into the end zone. 66 yarder, but it gives Tennessee the ball at the 20. And the third straight three and out. Look at the true freshman. You know what's interesting about that number 11? He was one of 11 children that grew up in his house in Sacramento, California in a three bedroom, one bath house. Henry Moses Ito Yese Too Too. True freshman from California, one of the best linebackers coming out of high school. Could have played anywhere and chose Jeremy Pruitt. Meanwhile, it's Shroud staying on the field with 3.43 to go in the third quarter. Wants to throw the deep ball again and this to the sideline. He was looking for a Ramel Keaton. Keaton covered up by Mukwamu. Garantano is back out on the field on the sideline. You see him there. That's some type of wrap and attention to his left wrist. about Jeremy Pruitt he was saying you know coming in at halftime we've got to be more aggressive we've got to call a game more aggressively offensively and then of course you're without your quarterback but they stayed aggressive I mean, you got JT Stroud in there relative unknown as a passer in game situations and they still continue to take those shots credit to the confidence they're showing and yet another new face a quarterback in Stroud As Shrout is flushed out, and actually he is marked right at on the nose of that yellow line. That's where the ball is, not where his feet were. He had a, the ball in his right hand. Fourth down. He, he's got this ball in his right hand. Steps out right there, but the ball's out of bounds. It's where the ball is. His foot's out of bounds. The ball's in his right hand. He sticks it out late. And Pruitt is furious with Shroud for making that mistake. And Brian Edwards will call for the fair catch and a ball that goes out of bounds and gives the Gamecocks the football back with 2.15 left. Tennessee only had one third quarter touchdown all season. They've had two here in the third quarter. We could see it. We talk about the confidence. Garantano hammering one in there, getting hammered. And then JT Shroud. They've been getting the ball to Marquez Callaway downfield all game. One was caught back. The other two were caught. One went for a touchdown. You see that the last four games. 16 points scored in the second half. They have exploded offensively here early in the second half today. Tavian Keister, great first half, and he's running hard for another first down. He now has 75 yards rushing. This is after he went well over 100, 175 against the Gators last week. That was a, a run that they had a lot of success with last week versus Florida. We'll counterplay. Feaster. Out of his belly. Feaster with a block near the quarterback. Shy Smith spinning into volunteer territory and down near the 42 yard line. That's a fantastic catch and run after catch by Shy Smith, but the pickup by Tavian Feaster right here is what makes it happen. It's just enough. He's just aware enough to keep his quarterback clean with DeAndre Johnson was going to have a free run at Halinski. He was able to deliver that ball to Shai Smith who worked hard after the catch to pick up positive yards. Easter on the ground gets a couple. <laughs> it's the first explosive play they've had since the 
first play of the game, the catch that Shai Smith made just one play ago. Quick throw, this one to Van inside the 36, marked out near the 35. You see Tennessee substituting that defensive front right now, South Carolina, in their tempo offense. Looks like they're going to throttle back now that they're in positive territory. Big third down, too. We work to get this conversion. Fresh legs for that Tennessee defensive front. On the run, incomplete to Van. It's fourth and two. <laughs> Looked like he had Brian Edwards there for a moment. Ended up trying to float one in there to Van. You could see it wasn't Edwards, rather. It looked like it was Ortrey Smith. And Will Muschamp says we're going. Down 10 with the football outside the 35. Muschamp figuring it's sort of no man's land here. And his team has been good on fourth down this season. And have not been good. Place kicking, that's for sure. Ball's batted down at the line. Daryl Taylor. Turnover on downs. It's a slow start to the season for Daryl Taylor. The SEC's leading returning sack artist from the edge. But boy, has he made his presence felt here today. Gets his hand up, gets upfield quickly. Right now, in the lap of the passer, Brian Halinski. from Jeremy Pruitt is back on the field with 33 seconds left in the half. Chandler, shy of the 40. Almost 45 minutes of football today. What has been a physical slugfest. That'll be the play, the last play of the quarter. You see him. Tennessee players holding up those fours. South Carolina, too. Gamecocks defense, they got to get a stop on this possession. They can't leak a whole lot of yardage. They need a shorter field for their offense to work. Smokey's howling. Crowds going crazy. The Southeastern Conference on Rocky Top. We head to the fourth. When your skin is feeling dry and crinkly, time for Gold Bond Healing Lotion. Penetrates 10 surface layers deep with seven moisturizers, three vitamins. Skin is nourished, healed, healthy looking. Gold Bond Healing, ultimate lotion, ultimate skin. We think you would really shine in the Aflac program. Aflac? Coach Saban, we have health insurance. Did health insurance pay for everything? No, we still have bills. Aflac gives you money directly to help with those. Aflac. And your deductibles, knee brace, whatever you choose. Aflac sounds like a winner. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. We try. Get help with expenses health insurance doesn't cover. Aflac is an official sponsor of the SEC. All right. In my Johnsonville commercial, we open with a car chase. There's semis, you got a couple of bikers in there, and grandma's on scooters. There's a news reporter down there, and she's going blah, 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 big car chase. Oh, yeah, they're chasing the Johnsonville Big Taste Grill. Finally, the driver turns to the guy next to him and says, did you leave the sausage on the grill again? And he goes, yep, might as well put them to good use. I don't know how it ends. It could be an explosion, maybe. And that's commercial made the Johnsonville way. It's not pretty good or nothing. It's not acceptable or nothing. And it's definitely not close enough or nothing. Mercedes-Benz SUVs were built, designed, and engineered with only one mission in mind. To be the absolute best. In the category, in the industry, in the world. Test drive one of seven Mercedes-Benz SUVs at your authorized dealer today. Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. So here's the deal. 
Somewhere along the way, Western boots got too expensive. And the styles? <sighs> Well, Tecovas fixed that. We make handcrafted, high-quality Western boots from the finest materials for a fair price. With free shipping, returns, and exchanges, and service that would make our grandmothers proud. From comfort to quality to price, value is one of our values. Find your pair only at Tecovas.com. SEC fans, gear up and support your favorite SEC school at Fanatics.com. The largest assortment of officially licensed SEC fan gear anywhere. Shop now and get today's special offer. Fanatics.com. Officially licensed everything. True South circles the square in Hodgenville, Kentucky. Sweet onion burgers in a seven-stool joint. And in a truck stop down the road, biscuits stuffed with hot country sausage. Here in this farm town where Abraham Lincoln was born, tobacco was once a cash crop. Bourbon is now an economic engine, and ideas about the South are in play. True South, Hodgenville, Kentucky, coming November 3rd. Guys, a quick update on Tennessee quarterback Jarrett Garantano. I'm being told he is doubtful to return with a left hand injury, so that leaves JT Shroud as the only guy, at least with a QB, listed next to his name on the roster. That's a good point because Jawan Jennings has taken some snaps at quarterback today as we go to the fourth quarter with Shroud out there ready to throw again, and this is a good one to Jennings. Up to the 45-yard line. And he is just shy of the first down. When you look at the South well, they Carolina. do move the chains there, so yeah. they do move the chains. In South Carolina, defensively, the challenge has been to slow down the big explosives. Tennessee has been able to generate those repeatedly. Now six plays of 20 plus yards by this Tennessee offense. It's another one-on-one -on -one fade, Jennings! He got it! Thirty-seven more. We were just saying, what about these explosive plays by Tennessee? Pruitt wanted to be head coach Jeremy Pruitt wanted to be aggressive in the play calling. Well, Jim Cheney heard it. And it mattered if it was JT Shroud or Jared Garantano in there. It's been Marquez Callaway and Jawan Jennings on the other end of these big bombs. 174 yards receiving for the senior today in the game of his career. will call timeout. Balls trailed at the half. Two third quarter touchdowns and they're on the march again in the fourth. What makes a house a home looks different for everyone. Apply on your phone in minutes for a region's home equity line of credit to transform your vision into a reality. Because some things are bigger than banking. Gear up for fall at Academy Sports and Outdoors. It's Velveeta Shells and Cheese versus the other guys. <laughs> Clearly, Velveeta melts creamier. We used to be so stressed from all the demands on our time, but then our doctor prescribed us something that changed our lives. It's called sleep. It's like being awake, but you feel good. 
And ever since we bought a purple mattress, this sleep thing has been taken to a whole new level. The purple grid cradles your pressure points while keeping you cool. Unlike memory foam that heats you up like a weird lingering hug. <laughs> Try purple today. If you're not 100% satisfied after 100 nights, you can return it for a full refund. Purple, the best thing since sleep. Choose a free purple product with mattress purchase. We're in big blue nation. The Wildcats at home. SEC East Showdown. To another level. Brian wants it off towards the end zone, running open. It's Albert O for the touchdown. Look at him zone. It is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland Thomas. You can't meet the lead. Tennessee up 10 with the football. Juwan Jennings came into the game 10th in UT history in receptions. He's passed four guys today. He's now sixth passing Tim McGee, Thomas Woods, Robert Meacham, and Jason Swain. Shroud. That was a dangerous pass that he got away with. Incomplete to Palmer. We're lucky to get that one back. But you're right. You know you've had yourself a game when you pass four dudes in the record books and you've still got almost a quarter of football to play. And by the way, you've moonlighted, moonlit, however you would say it, at quarterback. Started the game at quarterback. I think you were right the first time. Was I? Yeah, moonlighted. moonlighted. Yeah, he sure. did. He started. He took the first snap of the game at quarterback and ran for a first down. Out of the game now. Callaway taking the toss. Look at that open field tackle. Terrific play by DJ Wanham. Wanham, really the first time I think that we've brought him up today. We're going back to how impressed Tennessee was with this defensive line. DJ Wanham, relatively quiet most of this contest. Jay has Kinlaw, Wanham, and Kobe Smith, all his next level players. Those guys all line up against Shroud on a third and 11. And the limit UT to three. And Jordan's tackled by JT Ebay at the 15. Keep it conservative, pick up some yards, send out your place kicker who, a bit of a rough outing for Samaglia. But otherwise, as reliable a kicker as you're going to find in this conference. Junior from Nashville, Tennessee, made three field goals against the Gamecocks two years ago. This is for his second today from 31 yards. Back on track. Balls have scored 17 unanswered points. Time for the Gamecocks offense to get going. Payne thinks it makes the rules, but the rules just changed. New Icy Hot Lidocaine Dry Spray. Instant dry technology. No mess, no residue, fast acting relief. Rise from pain. New Icy Hot Lidocaine Dry Spray. Gatorade packs carbs to refuel and electrolytes to replenish. So you can bring the heat. Nothing beats Gatorade. Today's attendance, 19,000 State Farm agents. Go for State Farm. Well, Ducky Hatch! Who do you play for, Mahomes? State Farm. Who? State Farm. One more time. State Farm. Wake up. <laughs> and that's when I always wake up. What does it mean? Clearly, it means you should combine your home and auto with State Farm. Yeah, it's a weird interpretation. Hey, my name is George, and I love the Chick-fil-A grilled nuggets. It's like me grilling at home. It tastes very similar to that, except the seasoning. I, I probably can't season it as well as uh, Chick-fil-A does. The chicken's super tender, and honestly, the best nuggets I've ever tasted. My name is Meredith, and a little thing I love about Chick-fil-A's mac and cheese is the oven-toasted cheesy top layer. If home had a flavor, it would be Chick-fil-A's mac and cheese. 
I'm passionate about it. <laughs> Who do you think of when I say hero? Is it someone in a cape or is it someone you know? In SEC country, being a hero means tutoring a struggling student, feeding hungry neighbors in your community, or showing up at a hospital to make a child's day a little brighter. Heroes are all around us, and Belk wants to celebrate them with what we're calling Project Hometown Heroes. We'll show you everyday heroes that are strengthening the communities around the SEC. Now, who do you think of when I say hero? Learn more at belk.com slash Project Hometown. Dory Noka in studio, AT&T takes us to College Station to take a look at one of the best performances. How about Aggie quarterback Kellen Mond? 310 yards of total offense, five total touchdowns, and a 19-point win over Mississippi State. Guys? Dory, we're going to see Texas A&M and South Carolina play each other coming up in a few weeks. Our Aggies and the Gamecocks have played two of the most difficult schedules in all of college football. I wonder if that's catching up to Will Muschamp's team today as they trail by 13 to the balls. A team that is been unable to do much in the second half. Their last drive did go into U territory, but it was a turnover on downs. The ball's 35. Will Muschamp's team gets it at their own 25-yard line. They did move the football down the field last time, but prior to that, punt, punt, punt see the four drives meanwhile Tennessee stacking up points came out in the second half swinging and South Carolina has been doing nothing but taking these body blows one after the other they've gained 38 yards on the 15 plays that they've run here in the second half Easter's been a bright spot he carries balls near the 30 yard line Will Muschamp has never lost to Tennessee. 4-0 at Florida, 3-0 at South Carolina. Seven of his 31 conference wins coming against these guys. Just made hay over and over again versus the Volunteers. A thorn in Tennessee's side to be sure as a head coach. Low throw and Edwards can't make it. Third and six. And out in front. When you think about the three wins, that Muschamp has gotten as a head coach at South Carolina. They've all come by a combined 12 points. They've been close games. But in this one, especially here in the second half, Tennessee able to stretch out its lead to two possessions. Crowd's getting into it. Tennessee up there showing pressure from the boundary. Looks like they're going to stick with it. Alinsky incomplete. Van fell down. And he had Van open, and he knows it. The Tennessee showed pressure. Crowd got into it. Alinsky audibles was one of the things they talked about. Got to make sure that you know and understand your protection. At that time, he was picked up. Schamberger picked up. That's nice and clean pocket. It's just that's a bad ball. And it's blocked! The Volunteers cover it in the end zone! Touchdown! Daniel Batuli! Nashville had the block and the touchdown. And oh, by the way, he has 15 tackles, too. My goodness. Not to be outdone. Jawan Jennings doing it all. Marquez Callaway with the punt return. Daniel Batuli said, I want in on the action. A blocked punt, a recovered for a touchdown. And Daniel Batuli and the balls are rolling.
spooky fans now by Dr. Pepper. Did you hear that? Someone's in the house. I can. I think I just ran a skinny post. Go. State. Wow, oh, it's a state fan. <laughs> Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. <laughs> you don't think it'll happen to you, and you surely don't think it'll happen twice. I've lost two homes in my lifetime. First, it was a fire. My agent was right there and helped me rebuild. Then the tornado hit and destroyed everything again. Both times, my independent agent and auto owners took care of me like someone takes care of family. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. I just want to celebrate another day of life. Do it all, get you down low, low. Don't let it turn you around. Got another one. tells you what to expect when you're expecting a new pet. Okay, Benny, we need to get you a crate, training treats, potty pads. But with Chewy's low prices, you'll find amazing deals on everything you need for your pets. Oh, even those toys? You can save on toys, food, treats, even your pet's prescriptions. What about leashes, a bowl, his ID tag? You can get it all at a great price. Even the shipping is free. So what are you waiting for? Start saving at Chewy today. Save 30% on your first order at Chewy. Bring it, bring it, bring it. Oh, we got Red Right Flex 22Z. Hey, you player. All right, let's go. Red Right Flex 22Z in. Flex like flex? What? Okay, my right? It's... Uh, it's not up on that side. Let's go. Red Right Flex 22Z in on one. Ready? Oh, wait. There's a better way to stay close to your favorite players. NFL Sunday Ticket delivers every live out-of-market game every Sunday. Now for a special mid-season price. Only on DirecTV. ESPN, home of the college football playoff. Balls have 24 unanswered points. Latest coming from a Daniel Batuli punt block and recovery in the end zone for a touchdown. What about the seniors today? Juwan Jennings, Marquez Callaway, and Daniel Batuli all scoring touchdowns and all having some of their best performances in their four year careers. Let's go back and take a look at Batuli's block punt. It's just not a great effort right here. You're going to see T.J. Brunson right here for the South Carolina Gamecocks, and Aubrey Sullivan's going to go this way. Batuli's going to go that way, almost completely unimpeded. I don't know if they were expecting like punt safe from the defense. It looks like that's exactly what they thought. Instead, Batuli gets a free run at that punt. Blocks it cleanly and then recovers it before it gets out of the back of the end zone. The balls really start to pour it off. Walensky trying to get something going, and that's a good throw to Edwards up to the 40 yard line. Before that throw, Ryan was just 6 of 12 for 50 yards in the second half after throwing for over 170 in the first half. Good looking ball coming out of his hands that time, though. Nice velocity and pace on that pass. Batted down by Daryl Taylor. Walensky's lucky Taylor didn't catch it and score again. It was tricky right there. You got a freshman at right tackle, and he's got to get the defensive end's hands down. And he just doesn't get it done. You got to dive quickly. A set like you're actually going to pass protect, and then you got to shoot at those legs. He gave it away. Daryl Taylor played it. The second pass deflection he's gotten in this game. Second and ten, tight window in front of Alante Taylor, and it's Ortre Smith for a first down. Another good looking pass for Brian Lewinsky. That ball is shooting out of there. Both of those on target as well. You mentioned a tight window to fit it into for Ortre Smith. Henry Toho. 
grabbing his right ankle area. Working on it, either got stepped on or maybe kicked. We'll check on the true freshman and be back in just a moment. You got it, push it. Push Want to feel this it, motivated it. about managing your money? You Whoa, savings! You got this! Yeah! Yeah! You earned it! Find that tiny little action figure! With Regents Next Step, we give you the tools and guidance to help you and your money go further. Yeah, load that lunch, coach. Yes, sir. Yeah! We think you would really shine in the AFLAC program. AFLAC? Coach Saban, we have health insurance. Did health insurance pay for everything? No. We still have bills. AFLAC gives you money directly to help with those. AFLAC. And your deductibles, knee brace, whatever you choose. Affleck sounds like a winner. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. We try. Get help with expenses health insurance doesn't cover. Affleck is an official sponsor of the SEC. I found a way to relieve my constipation that's both gentle and fast. New Dulcolax liquid works naturally with the water in my body to provide gentle relief in as little as 30 minutes. New stimulant-free Dulcolax liquid puts you comfortably in control. At Zaxby's, we don't make salads. We make salads with all fresh ingredients, made just the way you want it, right when you want it. We call it handmade to order, and it's only at Zaxby's. You can't put wings on a car. You can't see an accident coming, or walk away from one like this. You can't make a car talk. How can I help you? You can't fight gravity. And you can't make one of the world's best SUVs even better. Go on, tell us what else we can't do. The all-new GLS. Are you ready to go? Possibly the safest, most spacious, most Mercedes SUV ever made. Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. It's a heck of a first half that had five lead changes. It has been all balls. Just one lead change in the second half. Tennessee outscoring the Gamecocks 24-0 in the second half. South Carolina does have it at midfield with 11-12 remaining. Difficulty spent for South Carolina in the fourth quarter. This season, coming into this game, they've allowed 83 points, most of any quarter. Finishing games has been a struggle for the game class. Linsky to Shai Smith turning and making a seven yard catch, tackled by Jalen McCullough. You see right now, Holinsky passing well. Probably the best rhythm he's been in this entire second half. It's Ortre Smith moving the chains. In front of Alante Taylor down to the 38. Interesting to see Mon Denson standing next to Holinsky on these plays as a decoy in that draw game can assist sometimes in protection as well. You know, they've had some difficulty, obviously, with some of the edge rushers. Daryl Taylor, most notably, although Taylor not in the lineup right now along the front. This was thrown into the stands. Second down. More college football coming up in just a few minutes on SEC Network at 7.30. It's our SEC Saturday night matchup. Mizzou traveling to Lexington to face Kentucky. Boy, Sue is a different team away from Como, winning all five of their games on Perot Field. Only played two road games, lost at Wyoming, and the shocking loss of Bandy last week. Both those losses somewhat shocking. You almost wonder, is that a strange side effect from spending so many games in a row at home? Malinsky's hit hard as he throws. It's third down. Keevon Bennett, who had a sack two weeks ago with the pressure there. Eric Douglas in there at left tackle. And he gets beat with the spin move. You're talking with Wanye Morris, the starting left tackle for Tennessee. He said that Kevon Bennett, one of their better pass rushers, as you see Daryl Taylor, is down on the field. Boy, what a night number 19 has had. A couple 
couple of sacks tonight, a couple of sacks versus Mississippi State. Had a stress fracture in his tibia that limited him in August. those players collide. Fifth year senior from Hopewell, Virginia. You hear all the fans chanting his name. They had his back after the call went against him in Tuscaloosa last week that extended that drive and led to an Alabama touchdown. Was another one of those, I'm sure, frustrating plays from a week ago, but certainly Tennessee bouncing back. 19 certainly bouncing back as it's helped off the field. Kind of got whipped around there towards the end of it, maybe hyperextending his knee, it looked like. Our colleague Gene Wojciechowski had some great comments about that man, Jeremy Pruitt last Saturday night saying that even though the team lost 35-13, it felt like it became Pruitt's team last week, became his program. Boy, they look good tonight. Defense is all over him on a third and 10. It's another sack, this one for DeAndre Johnson. They tried to slide the protection, but you're leaving a pass rusher one-on-one -on -one with a tight end. Kyle Markway right here. He ends up losing. He loses right now at the line of scrimmage. Truth is, Eric Douglas at left tackle, he loses as well. It was meet me at the quarterback. Ryan Alinsky didn't have a prayer on that one. Fourth and 17. Had to get past the 28 to keep this drive going. Alinsky straddling the line. He's past it now, and he's tackled at the 35. There is a flag down. the horrors for Will Muschamp's team in the second half tonight. And his quarterback speed up. His team looking somewhat deflated. You know, a couple of big games. Big game last week versus Florida. And the balls came out here in the second half. And not only offensively, but in special teams as well. Defense forcing these stifling drives. We were wondering during the last commercial break if Juwan Jennings was okay. Well, he's a quarterback again. Lead blocking from Ty Chandler. He gets a few yards. Juwan's had a career night with 174 yards receiving, as you see Brunson and Jerome Carvin getting into it. Yeah, number Juwan, two touchdowns tonight, Stinch. Passing yards for Tennessee offensively. Total yards, both of them season highs. And coming into this game, we were thinking, you know what? Both these teams are going to try to run the football, especially the way Tennessee had success on the ground last week versus Alabama. Who would have thought that the passing game would have been this explosive? Jennings to Shroud, and the handoff to Chandler, and he's past midfield up to the 49-yard line. 14 more for the junior from Nashville. We just got done talking about it, right? The run game kind of got away from it. Well, partly maybe a function of a lot of new faces on this offensive front. And this guy hasn't played tonight. You never knew what you were going to get at quarterback. How much Garantano? Would it be Shrout's game? Well, it turned into Garantano's game before he got injured. Back to Shrout they go. And it's a first down into Gamecocks territory. False start, offense, number 81, five yard penalty, first down. 
you think about what had to be managed at the most important position on the field for Tennessee in this game? So you come in, you start with Juwan Jennings. Then you get JT Shroud in there, and you got to be careful with how he's incorporated into the offense. And then here in the second half, you just cut him loose. Because Jared Garantano, I think otherwise, absent that injury, Garantano probably goes the distance in this game, the way that he was playing. And still, JT Shroud forced back into service due to that injury, and he has really answered the call. To the 50-yard line, tackled by T.J. Brunson. So it'll be second down. It's interesting what Travaris Robinson, the defensive coordinator for South Carolina, said about Jim Chaney. He said he's a patient play caller that makes your corners tackle, makes everyone on the field get involved with your defense. And we've seen that patience from Coach Chaney all night. I'll tell you what he'll also make your corners do is cover. And we've seen that, right? Because they've repeatedly, and even early in this game, they have been stretching the Gamecocks' deep defense vertically. At the 46. Well, part of it. We were talking with Jim Cheney yesterday, and he said, you know, you want to get your offensive line. You want to be physical, establish that ground game. But it's once you get a lead, this is when you start piling up the rush yards. And they said that the offensive line seemingly took over the game, or could have, had the potential of taking over the game, I should say, a week ago. Never really came to fruition. In this game, and in this scenario, this is where you find out if your offensive line is capable of taking over a football game. Six minutes to play with a lead. Can you finish with your offense on the field? Grace Bennett, 45. It'll be fourth down. Your SEC film room show is popular. We, we've done a lot of those sort of shows in the postseason as well. I could listen to you talk ball with Coach Chaney all day. The two of you are so passionate about the game and as you said coach Cheney he always has these little isms too that you remember hang your hat on being physical boys that's what he said as he sat down in his chair yesterday and met with us I love uh, a couple weeks ago when he said I'm a wandering gypsy man that's why I kept moving around all over this country <laughs> keeps dreaming of fly fishing out in Wyoming somewhere he'll be dreaming about that after this Great performance tonight as they call timeout with one on the play clock. I'll tell you what I didn't appreciate. He said, you know what you gotta do sometimes? You gotta loud talk. He said, you know what, Taylor? You just need to loud talk this guy. Right. Did you yell at me, man? What's going on? So a delay of game as Tennessee leads 41 to 21. Yeah, we asked him, how are you coaching those guys up on the offensive line? I yell at them really loud, and that scares them, he said. He said, you should try that with Stench. Yeah. Just turn off the microphone, Tom. <laughs> Soccer style kick, it works out for Brooks. As Gamecocks will get it inside the 10. Alyssa. Yeah, guys, we have some pretty great programming on the SEC Network. Monday night, 7 o'clock Eastern time. You can catch Greg McElroy, Marcus Spears, and myself on Thinking Out Loud. It's probably one of the craziest college football shows out there. And, of course, it's mostly SEC, but we do take you around the footprint. Right now, we're right in the middle of a big-time feud with Marty and McGee, those jokers that are on Wednesday night. So you got to tune <laughs> in because there have been some very impressive pranks between the two shows. Yeah, I'm waiting to see what's next. It's with Halloween coming up, right? Yeah, I, I believe Alyssa may be going over to the other side, though, next Wednesday. As Nick Muse makes the catch up to the 20. Hey, Alyssa, we got a surprise for you, my friend. We're so proud of you and all that you've done in your career as you were an alumni of the School of Journalism at South Carolina a few weeks ago as they had a ceremony there. As that's incomplete to Feaster. Last Friday was the ceremony. Six honorees in total, including former Gamecocks women's basketball All-American Asia Wilson. Look at Alyssa on the screen. Graduate in 2015. It's great to see you getting honored for that. Well deserved, my friend. Well, I appreciate it. And I, uh, I got a great broadcast journalism degree from the South Carolina School of Journalism that has allowed me to remain unbiased and call this game fairly today. <laughs> Alinsky, 
Just out with a flag down. And as they let's see, we'll check on this flag here. As Tennessee's pointing the Gamecocks way. What a performance by the Volunteers in the second half. A game that had five lead changes in the first half. Gamecocks led 21-17, but it has been all balls here in the second half. Tennessee's defense has limited South Carolina to 92 yards in the third and fourth quarter. Well, when you look at it, the first half especially. Two fouls on the play, both against South Carolina. Holding number 71 is declined. Holding number 52 will be accepted. Ten-yard penalty, second down. It was the way the game started, the way the half ended. We got South Carolina on top, both to start this game and to finish the half. But that was it. And in the middle portion, Tennessee was able to really assert itself. And then here in the second half, it has been all balls. On that Auburn LSU finish in just a second. That's the Dimson and Mon is up past the 15. Dari, what's happening down at Tiger Stadium? Well, guys, it's a little too little too late, quite frankly, for Auburn, though they do get into the end zone here, Seth Williams from Bo Nix, but LSU essentially running out the clock with 30 seconds to go, up by three. Third and 14. It's caught by Shai Smith as Warrior misplayed it. It is fourth down. The 26 yard line. You want to mention that Kentucky and Mizzou is coming up after us. Tom Jordan and Cole in Lexington. Quite a finish in that game a season ago up in Columbia, Missouri. Mercy fourth and four moves the chains with the throw to Smith. He's had a career high today in yards and receptions. Shy is 10 for 141. It started out hot. First play of the game. Took it to the house. 75 yarder. It's come up big in a couple other moments. That's a good enough for this one. Just like three days ago. Took another one to Shy. You can understand why Jeremy Pruitt, Jimbo Fisher, trying to think back to other coaches that have coached against this guy, have said that's a National Football League player. He's dangerous, there's no doubt. A lot of attention to Brian Edwards, rightfully so, with circus style catches that he's able to execute. This is Edwards, came, became the career leader in South Carolina history, going over past Kenny McKinley in this game with career receptions. McKinley and Edwards, the only two to go over 200. He made one of the more remarkable catches I've ever seen in person. Continues with Muse grabbing his fourth ball. Gamecocks the will have to regroup Stench now at three and five as they play Bandy on SEC Saturday night next week. Tennessee will host UAB next Saturday night on ESPN2. Well, you touched on it as Feaster can't quite handle the swing pass. Well, South Carolina's schedule is pretty daunting. This was a gateway game for both of these teams. Obviously, the Gamecocks came in with one more win. You're trying to muscle your way to bowl eligibility at six. Tennessee's going to be able to match that with the victory here tonight. Three wins, an opportunity in the balance of their schedule to make it to the postseason as well. Exactly. Maybe yeah. I don't know how many people saw that coming? And they were one in four after the Florida game. As the balls will call timeout. 2-11 to go. Now here's today's Gatorade fueling performance. How about the seniors from Tennessee? Well, you talk about all the young players. And yeah, there's some good ones. The Marquez Callaway, punt return, touchdown. Capitalized on the good field position, force a long punt. Make a pay. Jawan Jennings. Touchdown. 
right before that, and then a block punt by Daniel Batuli. He's making all kinds of tackles, and then, of course, special teams plays. And Daryl Taylor, a couple of sacks, passes broken up. This is a senior class that's been through quite a bit, there's no doubt. But they showed up to play in a very important game. They've had two must wins. Think about back to the Mississippi State game. They needed to get that victory. They got it. They needed to get this win. They got it. There's only six guys that play for Tennessee that have been here four plus years. Nigel Warrior and Tyler Bird are the other two that weren't used in that in that graphic. All have contributed significantly tonight. It just gives you an idea of what a deficit Jeremy Pruitt is operating from in terms of total depth. There is a buy-in that is happening in Knoxville right now. No, and not to mention, we're talking about some of the players lost to injury in this game. Both your starting tackles out of the game, which incidentally, both of them were true freshmen. If you're a Tennessee volunteer, that's difficult to overcome. Should be a free play on fourth and five. In fact, they whistle it dead. Maybe the balls were drawn off. We'll see. Once again, Mizzou and Kentucky coming up next on SEC Network. We were talking about that finish last year in Como. Cats were down 14 to three in the fourth quarter. Lynn Bowden took a punt return back. And then Terry Wilson threw the touchdown pass to CJ Conrad to win it at the gun. After a PI to Ahmad Wagner, because of course it was. That guy. <laughs> renamed Flagner. <laughs> That's right. It's perfect. <laughs> Just throw it near him. Well, in the SEC, we will turn our attention to what's going to happen in Jacksonville next week. It'll be the featured game in the Southeastern Conference. There are two fouls on the play before the snap. Offside. Defense number 95. That five-yard penalty results in a first down. Afterward, Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 13 for South Carolina. His first of the game. That 15-yard penalty will be enforced. It will be first and 10. So Chai Smith with the personal foul call. How about the Dogs and the Gators next week in Jacksonville, the place you've played in a couple of times? Well, you think coming into the season, you thought, ah, you know, there's a good bit of separation likely between Georgia and Florida. Not so. As we've seen as the season has unfolded, Florida with their lone defeat coming to a West Division opponent, LSU, an undefeated LSU, who will go into their bye week preparing for Alabama a couple of Saturdays from now. And of course, Florida playing a backup quarterback because who isn't in the SEC this year? Well, really only four teams when you think about it. Texas A&M, Kellen Mond, who had a great day game today. Bo Nix at Auburn, a true freshman. And there's Jake Fromm at the University of Georgia who's somehow been able to stay healthy as well. And then you go out there to Missouri. Kelly Bryant, who Kelly did Bryant. come out of the game a couple weeks ago against Troy with a knee injury. But you're right, that's it. Mac Jones is starting tonight for the Crimson Tides. The first time Nick Saban at Alabama has ever had to go to a backup quarterback to make a start after Greg Emerson had that outstanding open field sack on to a last week. Watch out. Yvon Bennett, a.k.a. Biscuits Boy, is all over Helensky again. And don't I forgot about the Heisman contending quarterback at LSU, my bad, Joe Burrow. They haven't had to rotate him out yet. It certainly wouldn't have been for play. My goodness. Another big victory for the LSU Tigers. Auburn's giving them fits. They're there for a little while. That was a close game. Course, the Tigers ultimately able to stretch that lead out and secure a victory. Interesting to see how South Carolina will regroup from this game. If proven that they can play with anyone, what do they have when they host Clemson on Thanksgiving weekend? That Holinsky pass was almost picked off. Bryce Thompson was back there. All right, Mizzou and Kentucky is on SEC alternate channel. I'll start over there and then be here as soon as the game is over. 
about those two? A couple of seniors. They wanted this win. You know, they want to see if they can extend their careers here at Tennessee. They knew they had to get this one to make it to bowl eligibility. In fourth and ten, Holinsky's pass is deflected at the line by DeAndre Johnson. It's a turnover on downs. Tennessee takes over. It's the first time USC has been shut out in the second half this year, 24-0. And now you look at the ball schedule. I know the FBI has some faith in the Kentucky Wildcats, but Kentucky's got all kinds of problems at quarterback right now. I see a roadmap to the postseason. You really do. I mean, you think, it, think about, you know, perhaps a dangerous trip to Como, the way that Missouri has played at home. Because, as you mentioned earlier, a different team when they're there in Columbia. But you know, otherwise, you're talking about a Tennessee football team that has rebounded, pulled themselves up off the canvas. The season couldn't have started worse, and yet they have muscled their way back into this season. You talk to the coaches. We've had them three times, and they'll talk about it. We see them in practice. They give tremendous effort. They have not laid down. They found ways to get better, and their attitude has been outstanding, and it's been under adverse circumstances. This wasn't a clean game. We've seen three different quarterbacks, if you want to throw in Jawan Jennings. We've also seen all three wins this season sure, in this crew right. as we were here for Mississippi State and the UT Chattanooga game. We will not be here for the UAB game next Saturday night. That's a 7 o'clock kick on ESPNU. Just to update that. Think about it. So there's a quarterback slash receiver. Had a career night with Jawan Jennings slash running back. Shroud and Juwan Jennings on the field tonight have been terrific. Jarrett Garantano with a terrific performance in his own right before coming out with an injury through for 229 yards. And look at the hug he just got from Jeremy Pruitt. What a difference a week makes. Tennessee ambushes South Carolina in the second half after the Gamecocks led Heading to the third quarter. These two guys talk a lot, both coming from the Saban coaching tree. As the Vols get the win tonight to improve to three and five, and Jeremy Pruitt is on the field with Alyssa. Coach, you guys have been fighting and clawing for the last couple of weeks. What does this win mean to you? Well, you know, you, you think about how this game started. They scored on the first play of the game. Uh, our kids responded. South Carolina's kids responded. Uh, but at halftime, our guys made a decision to play cleaner football, to play longer, play harder, uh, and it showed. Jawan Jennings did it all for you guys today. What did you think of his performance? You know, Jawan done a great job, but all of our guys done a great job. All of our guys. This was a team win. Uh, I'm, I'm so happy for our guys, the way they competed, persevered, and they put on more steam. Your defense didn't allow South Carolina any points in the second half. What would you think of the way they played? Well, we kept them from running the football. That helped. Made them one-dimensional. So, uh, And then we got a lead, so that helped. But we had two special team scores. Huge day for the special teams. Thank you, Coach. Tennessee, 41-21 victory tonight over South Carolina. Let's send it to Lexington, Tom Hart, Jordan Rogers, and Cole Kublik. 